Hello everybody and welcome to the Flickering Torch Blades in the Dark Red Herrings live stream. Um, as what are you doing, Alex? <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> what, what was that? I'm so um, confused. Right now. I ju that was we didn't discuss doing the faces before the stream, but okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. You got totally derailed my intro. Uh, um, I was trying to put, I was trying to put you off like that was on. <laughs> 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 Highly professional coming to you. Look at that, you guys. God. You got you, you boys. Bring it in. You boys. Right. Okay. Okay. There are words um, you want to say, but you can't say them, can you? <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of a family friendly show, apart from when we decide to, you know, do crime. Uh, yeah, don't welcome, do crime, kids. <laughs> don't do crime, kids. Welcome to our Blades and Duck live stream. Uh, this week's episode is a little bit of a recap, it's a little bit of a, a session point five. Uh, like we like to do on this show, I will hand it over to our excellent GM. Wait, where is he on the screen? He's over there. Jordan! <laughs> no. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's been a while since we've done these, so I hope everybody had a good Christmas and a good New Year. Players included, obviously. Okay. Uh, we'll go around the room like we normally do. I say room, you know what I mean. Sean, tell us who you are. Let's we'll start with you this week. Yeah, I'm Sean. I'm playing a Whisper character called Silas Greenback. He's kind of the uh, whisperer of the unknown spirits. Although there now is somebody amongst the group who can punch these spirits, which is quite interesting. Seems to be punching thin air to those not observing him, but I know the truth. <laughs> Speaking of punching spirits, Addison, please introduce us to your character. So, I'm Addison for the Pod of Many Things, and I play Olin Welker. The Scovlin Cutter, and uh, I am that the aforementioned mugger of postmen, um, puncher of ghosts, Be and beater of small and, children, <laughs> and beater of small children, um, and also after a a, a, uh, a twist in my character arc, also revealed to be a lot more important than people thought. They thought I was just the muscle. Turns out. Mm. I'm, I'm more than just a pretty face. Yes. Maybe could lead to some interesting developments down Wait, the line. Wait, you're supposed what? to be a pretty yeah. face. No. <laughs> In Scotland, this is handsome. Do you not understand? Is there something wrong with you? If you call a smashed accordion beautiful, yeah, sure. <laughs> James, go ahead with your character. Tell us about... So, I play Giscard Reventloff. He is a leech. Um, the saboteur and technician of the group. Former university professor. It was an incident with an invention and a missing building. <laughs> Very good. And finally, we have the scout group of scoundrels resident leader, Ben. Go ahead and tell us who you are. Well, I'm Ben from the Flickering Torch. I was the reason we didn't have a live stream last week because I had COVID. Te technically, you're still isolating, are you not? But he hasn't um, rolled a one. But you're feeling right. He's fe you're feeling worry, right this week. Getting, as, as you can see, he is well. He is here, and he's playing. The green tinge. It's it's lighting. I'm not that sick. <laughs> he hasn't rolled a one yet. He's still with us. Well, he's usually, I wear a costume, but I'm still feeling a bit peaky, so uh, you don't get costume this week. Uh, but I am playing Aldrich Booker. Who's this group's leader? Um, he's pl he's the character class spider, which means he's very good at conspiracy theories. Uh, not theories. He's very good at regular conspiracy. Um, <laughs> he's a little bit of a schmoozer. He likes he likes to um, you know meet with the ladies or the gents and uh, charm them into uh, giving away their secrets. Um, and that got him in a lot of trouble <laughs> last week. Yeah. Um, yeah, not last week, but last session. I said week, uh, but that, that's ah. me. Relative. Time is relative. What is time anymore? <laughs> In COVID times, every time is less. Is it, is it January? Is it March? I don't know anymore. <laughs> but I yes, think you're with, with, with the British government on that one, Jordan. <laughs> like, they don't know when not, lockdowns or anything. Like get the stream cancelled, please. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, We're not American. We can't do that very easily. What's that red dot? On you going to flatten the curve <laughs> over five years. <laughs> <laughs> going to flatten it gradually. Uh, well, the further out you get, right, the, the, the flatter it'll appear. Right? Right. The further away you get, the, the more gradual it looks. And, and to be fair, well, cool. like someone should have told America that they, 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 yeah, sure, flatten the curve, but not on the 
X axis. We should have done a Y axis. Um, <laughs> right, yes. Shall we stop talking politics and play hmm. a grown up game? Absolutely. <laughs> should we stop Let's talking stop real world politics? And... Don't try and deny it. We are grown <laughs> men playing at a game. <laughs> going to beat up some children. Let's, Let's do, do that, it. shall we? Do it. <laughs> It's got this. This is this has gone off the rails very quickly. This is it's the, the first intro we've ever done. It's the first stream of the about. year. We're starting everything. We need to go on off the rails. Just being honest, most of oh. us kind of there's a majority here in the teaching profession, and we just want to be up some kids. Okay, let's just get that. Out there. <laughs> John, do you remember when I said don't get the stream cancelled? I think we're already cancelled, guys. If I'm honest, yeah. let's move on. So <laughs> we'll go out in a blaze of glory. Then let's so, do it. Just, just yeah, make it thank work. Thank you very much, my guys. And welcome, everyone, again to our regular Monday night stream. Keep trying to keep it up again, regular Monday nights from now on. Obviously, my, after a bit of a hiatus, but welcome and thank you for tuning in. It was only over Christmas so, and, and a week after New Year's. Yeah, so it's, right. it's a little bit about it, but we'll be fine. So just to recap from the last time we were here, for those of you who may not have seen or for guys who might have forgotten some of the details... We started off the previous session, James. I can see your guilty face. Mm-hmm. We started off the previous session. Sorry, with... Jordan. Um, can we do a whole recap? Because this is like the midway point. So I think it would be nice if we recapped the whole of the stream, if that's available. <laughs> you put him on edge now. I put you on the spot here. I do realize <laughs> he wasn't ready for that. He wasn't Can't ready for tell that. the no, bloody really. language. <laughs> we stole some things. <laughs> We pulled a house so, down. Gonna... You pulled a house down. Yes, we start. Yeah, so the leader, yeah. so we pulled it down. You pulled it down. <laughs> so we have had several incursions. Then we'll, again, we will begin from the beginning. Apparently, so we've had our party meet up. They have formed a, this gang, this band, ragtag band of scoundrels from all walks of life. They've managed to get themselves some monetary funding from a patron. And initially we picked them up, um, having been pro- commissioned by one of the gangs to acquire quite a rare spiritual charm, which is how they kicked off. They raided a house of quite a recluse occult gang. And Ben, what did you do? Well, I mean, us as a gang, because again, I'm the leader and my problems are your problems. We might have pulled their house down. You I think that's house exactly down. what you did. And then that set you off. No, it, it had to be pulled down because of maritime law. Let's be absolutely crystal clear. There it is. <laughs> recap, just, just a heads up for the recap, there will be a lot of maritime law. Because <laughs> following this, we've had various excursions with the party. We have stolen some more jewellery from the crematorium, which was being held by the spirit waters. We've ventured out into one of the forgotten districts of Duskville, out into the Deathlands to again raid the house of a long-dead ghost who wished some belongings returned to his family. And then we have our most recent adventure with our so-called dimmer sister, Karis, who was, incidentally, if, in case none of you realised last time, she was the woman who lived at the house that you demolished with a horse and cart. Oh, and yeah. she had tried well to that. The wishes, tried, the wishes <laughs> tried to acquire their help in... Procuring some funds so she so that she could find a new place to live, and they did that through the means of a casino heist, proper Ocean's Eleven style, breaking in, posing as guards. We got a little bit of a history from one of our characters, finding out that whereas before he'd sort of played himself as being a bit of a sort of down in the dirt, not very important person, as actually quite a significant political figure. But like I said, that is a t- that is a story for another time. But then we have finished successfully. Again, how you did it was amazing. You walked out of the front door of the casino holding a big bag full of diamonds. And that was probably one of the bad- most badass things you've ever done. <laughs> and then we pulled you- a statue down outside as well. <laughs> yeah, that was that. You did it again with a statue this time. <laughs> yes, um, and then you met up back at your hideaway, which is this sort of sinking canal boat. It's not quite sunk, but it's definitely in various stages of sinking. You settled your accounts, you fenced whatever goods you could, procured the money, gave Karis her share so that she could go off and 
purchase a new property for herself and for her friends who's now are homeless. Let's be honest, you made a bunch of women homeless, guys. You should be proud of yourselves. Mm. Hop guilty, and Runner. In it's our defence, they were in a gang, so... Yeah, that's true. But they stay inside. And technically, stay inside. under maritime law, we're homeless because the boat's sinking. Um, yeah. yeah, you can't say that no, we're no. not I am going to have to Google some actual maritime laws if I want to. It's worth it. It's also going to say none of the stuff that we've done in it, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> What's oh. it? Mooring? Oh, you're, you're in charge of mooring your hang boat. On, hang it's on just a minute. shame that we moored it to a person. Uh, hang on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he had to moor the boat. That is the captain's job. He must make sure the vessel is secure. Now, the fact that it was attached to a man's neck has no bearing on protecting yeah, the vessel. That did happen also. But no, so following this, this various successful and unsuccessful deeds, we pick up just after this particular, this latest score, where we have procured the largest payoff yet in terms of our scores. And obviously, some of that payoff has gone to our resident Dimmer sister so that she can go off and find a home. And the rest of the party are now stood. The tide's coming in, the boat started to sink again. But we are, what we're going to do is what we've normally end what we've normally do at the end of the scores, which is downtime, which is everyone gets two actions to do downtime, and there are various things you can do amongst that. So I will start with Ben. What would you like to do in downtime for our latest score? Okay, so you're missing one small detail. What was pinned to the door when we got back? It, uh, it was in one of the chat channels. What was pinned to the door? You can't remember that. that. What was pinned to the door? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking I'm about. I'm just scrolling, trying to find it in the right in the right chat channel. Ben, what do you want to do for downtime? It was, it was, oh, it I've was, got it... illness. Can I? Uh, can I heal? There you go. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I found it. So um, uh, Naomi, who was playing Karish, uh, dropped a note on one of the the, the pre-show Blaze channel, and it was in a couple of days of time, maybe after downtime, <clears throat> you'll find a small note pinned to the door of your boat. It's an address in the night market, and underneath it says, "Thank you, Love K." No. Oh, bless no. Him. But as that note specifies, James, that is after downtime. So we'll find that note in a couple of days. It doesn't say who it's. It doesn't say. True, but I think you might have, might, might, may not have read the post. <laughs> no, I did. I, I, I did. That guy. Mind. That guy. Then stick uh, your hat on and do downtime. That I'm guy. Not, I, I'm not wearing the hat the whole thing. Uh, okay, <laughs> so um, I yeah, I need to heal. Can you remind me how I do that? Yes. Please? So you've got a little progress clock on your character sheet called healing, I think, or health or whatever. Yep. Little healing, four piece. Yep. Clock. So yeah, you roll. Um, I think this is, yeah, you just you roll um, like a long term project. You roll like a single dice, and the result of that indicates how many ticks you heal. One. It's Start it's again, one. boys. Right. Start so, again. We're going to put. Happy New Year. At least. Yeah, you you're going to put one Ill. tick on that clock. It's a miracle you survived COVID. <laughs> Wait, you um, would you like to spend the downtime activity? I'm also sorry, he just miraculously made it. Look at him, one, 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 amazing. Uh, He's with it. I've got a, I've got a video coming out on Thursday that's got a clip from Blade in the Dark. That time I rolled three ones. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah, uh, let's yeah. let's do that again. Let's, let's right. So you're spending your second downtime actually to heal a second time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm only panicked and have ringing ears, so I don't know why this is. Um, yeah, why this is so, so I've bad. Got, I've got a dead arm because of you. Um, oh yeah, I did give you a dead arm as harm, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Basically, what we see is Aldrich with with one finger in his ear, going mop, 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 trying to get the ringing to go away. <laughs> Fine. Fine. I think, I think so he's so asking for another um, bucket. Give him another bucket. From that, we'll, well, from that you do three, so we'll, I'll fi I believe that'll fill your clock, won't it? That, yeah, baby, that'll fill my clock. <laughs> so all your harm gets reduced by one level, so you go from so, your one, your level one harm goes away, excellent. and what was your level two harm? Panicked. Panicked, so that's just um, fright level one harm frightened, so it gives you slightly less effect. Frightened seems worse than panicked. I can find this to find an official term if you want. Can we go Maybe with feeling now. a bit peaky? Can I put feeling that? a bit peaky. <laughs> Let's go with feeling a bit peaky. A bit peaky. I don't That's think it'll fit in the box, but feeling a bit peaky. Peaky. 
Is that what we would classify the man with the rope round his neck, feeling a bit peaky? That's what we'll so, feeling, Make it an acronym. Feeling a bit peaky actually does fit the box, a bit peaky. So, so slightly well. reduced effect from your rolls, but that's never negligible. Addison, we'll go over to you next. What does Orlan want to do for downtime? So the first thing he wants to do is he wants to get rid of some stress. So that's yes. uh, 1d6, isn't it? You have to. So it's your attribute. Really. So of the three attributes you've got, which is insight, prowess, and resolve, what's the lowest yeah. one of those? One. Yep. So roll the single d6 to clear the stress. Uh, hang on. The number you roll is the amount of stress you clear. I'm just going to pop my chair up a little bit because I feel like I'm very short two. right now. Uh, so I've got two, so that removes two, right? It was removed too. Yep. Again, you've got a second one if you wish to do that again, or you can do something I think, else. I think I would, I would do that again, and then can I spend a coin to get an extra downtime? Yeah, you may. You can so you can indulge in your vice again. Uh, one d six, three. Yep. So three, another three stress off. Two stress from from what? Yep. So I had seven stress, Jesus. And then I'm going to spend a coin, leaving me with two coin, uh, to heal. Possibly. Cool. Yes, no worries. So you're going to feel like... gonna go to a Scotland doctor in one of the refugee camps, someone who I trust, and yeah. uh, give him some money to fix my up my dead arm and take a uh, reapply my bandages to my hands because I've still got messed up hands. So, yeah. That's fine. So you yeah, still roll for that, but I'll obviously bump because you're getting some assistance. I'll just bump up the numbers that you roll. So uh, four. So. So I will say that you basically you can t fill five ticks, so you can fill it, and then you oh, can have an extra one on there. Oh, I already had an extra one from last time. Oh, okay. So well, say that's... say three then. Yeah. Say th yeah, three. That takes so me to a full clock. Full yeah. clock, and then put the other two on there as both as another. So you basically he set you up. Say he's left you with some stuff to set you up for future injuries. Oh yeah. Because so <laughs> he knows you'll probably get them. So yeah, all your harm gets reduced by one level. Yeah. So I've got no harm left. So I come back. Feeling good, and you actually see that um, for the first time when he comes back, he's feeling pretty good about himself. So uh, he's got like what looks like one of the his other jacket, but it's like pristine in pristine condition, like and it's a bit more decorative. Like yes. his other jacket is exactly the same, but it's got like patchwork in it from where it, obviously the sleeves has come out and the elbows, and I've like stolen bits from other jackets of people that I've killed, and then. Yeah. This one is literally like pristine, beautiful, like Scotland military jacket. Like, Wait, so do you heal great. now by just going to the tailor? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I basically went to the doctor because also as well, he, uh, the, the refugee camp I went to is that refugee camp. So I went to the refugee camp with my mum in. Yes. Got it. Cool. So we'll move on to Giscard. What would Giscard like to do for his two, or possibly more, downtime actions? Well, <clears throat> that was a fairly unstressful event for me, so I'm going to keep my one stress, um, unless yeah, it affects yeah. me rolling for um, finishing off my project clocks. Yes, go ahead. Working on your long-term projects. Have you got, you've got two different project clocks, from what I remember. How many? I how do. I finished the first one, which was the, the, the put-together design. Now we're working yeah. on the make-it one. So you've got, so you've finished your clock. Well, you've essentially got the blueprints of the thing you want to make. Now you have to invent it. So it'll be, you'll be rolling your skill in Tinker. Yeah, try and true. piece this machine together. And obviously how well you roll will fill the clock. Six. A six. That's Ten, three which ticks. means that finishes it it's an eight segment clock. So yeah, it's three ticks on the um, second clock, so. I was that only three ticks? Do it like they didn't like me. Um, project project clocks work a bit differently. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have forgotten this rule. You had two separate home. ones. So you had one which you filled, and then you have yep. a separate one which is currently empty. Yeah. So that's that's the one you're now filling. Okay. So you've three in that in that one at the minute, and then again, feel free to try more. Um, they're they're at the expense of coin to roll again, right? Oh, so were those well, both your got... downtime actions? No, that was one of them. So that was one of them. Okay. You've got a second one. Whoop! Ah, no, there's no roll in this. It's a different dice pop. Eight. 
So it's a three and a five. So yeah, that's another three on your clock. So you still you're almost there. I'm right. I am. Um, yeah. I'll spend a coin. I was going to say spending a coin gives me another roll, doesn't it? You might give you another roll. Gives you an additional an additional downtime activity. Oh, I might have to do that in a second. Maybe six. after um six. Like, where is it? After Sean. Oh. Yeah. So it's two again. It's it's two separate numbers. So it's right. a five and a one. You can, you can go. And first. it will be yeah. That's a yeah. Fill up the clock. Is that two segments? Yeah. 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 Excellent. Fill the clock. So you have invented. What have you invented? So my invention is uh, guns that go bang more than once. In this case, uh, some form of repeating pistol. Right. So you've invented a sort of an old-style revolver, if you will. You've invented. Uh, let, let's go with something cooler than a revolver. Think of it as a um, revolver look-alike, but rather than having a little drum, it's got a slot on the side, and it pulls through a little rack of six rounds. Yeah. So with this, you've cooler. invented both type of right, You had to invent both yeah. the, the ammunition to be used in this and also the mechanism that would happen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you have you now have a gun that goes bang more than once. Indeed. And yeah, we will we'll we'll play with that. We'll figure that out how, how mechanically how that works in the moment, as we normally do with Blades in the Dark, where we plan everything. We, we don't plan anything. We do everything I... on the fly, which can be really good or really, really <laughs> bad. I imagine it's still one shot per round and one round reload. We'll work it out, honestly. Very, very loose mechanics with stuff like this in this game, which is what I love about it. But finally, we'll go to Sean. Any downtime activities you wish to... As always, you start with drinking to excess. I'm on my own this time, so I go down to the drinking club. But I I do bring with me some papers I've prepared. Uh, These are, you know, just handed out to fellow gentlemen enjoying the delights of the beverages. Just leave them lying around, you know, the luxurious bar. Okay. Just, are, they saying, just, are, they in, are they in reference to anything in particular? Yeah, yeah a couple of things. Uh, obviously, a little, you know, little little obey to my my captain and his his new. He's trying to recruit people for his special club, so there'll be a little mention of the special club in there, but no specifics. Just that it exists. Um, yeah. okay. And of course, uh, a couple of references to the black lamps, of course, and the the, oh, the course, struggle. Yes. The struggle, the, the ever building revolution, the hardships that they've done, and also about the fact that they're now trying to, uh, you know, their house collapsed for the fellow black lights, their house collapsed. So I'm just going to kind of sprinkle that mystery, and even though it's got nothing to do with them, but it just is great to mix the two together. The black lamps have been slightly dimmed, it says in the article cover. House collapse, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's the first uh, downtime activity. And when I finally, you know, after a day of recovering from dealing with the spirits, uh, which you have to do. I, I spend time on my clock. I'm trying to, uh, you know, solve our bailing out. If you remember, I'd already started the process of trying to stop us having to keep bailing out all the time. And it's not because yeah. we aren't going to sink. We are still going to sink. It's just we mm. don't want to be doing it all the time. So, um, yeah, I yeah. spent time on, on banging wood into the back <laughs> of the boat. So if you could kindly roll us a d6. Yeah. I haven't really so got I'll, to... First oh, of all, we'll do your... Um, what's your lowest attribute rating first, I'll ask Sean, of the three attributes on your character sheet? What's the one that's the first column, essentially, yep. of the three sections? What's the one that you've got the fewest dots in? Because that's how uh, you'll then, do roll then, for your part. I've got a couple that have nothing in them at all. Uh, we'll do... Um, we'll do. We'll call it 1d6 then. That's fine. I'm happy with that. I don't expect it to move forward very far. That's fine. Roll a six. How many stress do you that's a that's a bad omen for me. Well, how many bro- how many stress do you clear? Uh, I'm now clear of stress. I didn't have any harm, so I'm okay. I'm clear. Lovely. So you clear of stress. So you want to now work on your project of trying to get the boat to not sink as much. Absolutely. Do you have a project clock for that currently? Yeah, I or? do. I've only got. I only had previously one in it. So okay. uh, I'll roll yeah. you. So you'll tell you what. I'm. I'm you're trying to wreck this. This is a this is a wreck skill. Can I just? Leave... Can I just? Is the opposite of wreck, and surely that I I should be the one fixing the boat. You want me to float an idea, uh, real quick by you? It must be the word float oh. an idea. Might be a really good idea. <laughs> so as a whisper, right? Yeah. You don't want to bail out the boat, but you could enlist the help of a spirit to bail it out, right? That's a bloody brilliant idea, actually. Yeah. In my stupor state, I agree with you there, Captain. Let's do that. Wow. 
Let's. So, what, how many points do you have in a tune? This is going to go well. Oh, I'm going down. I, I, I'm uh, going down the university pub. Excuse got me. I've got two. I've got, I've got two in a tune. <laughs> yep. And I'm quite happy to stick with that. I don't think I need to make any devil's bargains. The spirits have often treated me well. Let's go with that. I, I want to go. I want to command one to keep this vessel bailed out Ooh, over the yeah. next few months. Lovely. Got You've got a six, six so Perfect. you can tick. Um, Three ticks on your progress clock. That's good. So we're on four. We're having the spirits come along and every now and again, they come just a, a, like in Fantasia, they're just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. Okay, in fact, it could look like a broom is moving along. A couple of, yeah, a couple of, a couple of bales. That looks good. Yes, and we, because we're not exactly hiding. Like... Because we're not hiding this, it could actually look like bales of water are actually just somehow carrying themselves out to the top of the vessel and emptying themselves out the side. Oh, that is exactly what it looks like. Our gang reputation um, is weird anyway, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, yeah, you have well. a reputation for being a weird gang. And, so. and because point does it turn got, from weird to fucking terrifying? Because if you think about it, because we've got no control over when the spirits will empty the vessel, other than the fact when it's slightly sinking, they could literally throw it over people walking past. <laughs> <laughs> Which is well, quite suddenly, funny and perfect, sudden, suddenly, perfect. suddenly at two in the morning, you uh, <laughs> the, the buckets start moving. <laughs> so there you go. That's good. Oh, so um, so that's it. Is that everything? That I, time, guys? I spend a coin and have another downtime action, please? Yes, you may. What would you like to do, Ben? I would like to um, do a consort to increase my uh, my long term project. What is the name of your long-term project, Ben? What Stolen I, I love from it. the excellent oh, Mitchell and Webb show, um, I am trying to build a a cult, a members society called the Inebriati, uh, which is kind of like the Illuminati, but you get plastered. No, you don't. You only have just about three, don't you? Uh, I think it's one and a half pints. Uh, that's a six and a two. Cool. So, if you if you on your long term project clock for building the inebriati, you fill three segments. Oh, that that puts me over by one segment. That's filled it. Then you now have a you now have a group of drunk people that you can call upon, and they, I will roll to see how helpful they are to They're you. Quite frankly, drunk people. They're, it's they it's they like the Freemasons. The the there is one. There is one other role. It's so that happy tipsy game, moment. Normally, the GM makes the engagement role. There is one other role that the GM can make, which is called a fortune role, which is basically not something that the party is directly trying to do, but it's basically how well something else goes on. So it's not influenced by you, but how well somebody else. So an, another, like a turf war that may be going on further down the city, something that I can roll to see. So basically, I've now decided that whenever you wish to call upon the help of the inebriati, I will make a fortune roll to see how helpful they actually are. <laughs> well, I mean, they helped me drown that guy. That was my last... Uh, that, was, that was our last one. It was an initiation. They all had to do that. Yeah. But yeah. from now on, they're all, they all know they're in the gang. They're all just pissed all the time. So that every means... time you want them to help you, I will roll to see how helpful they are. I think that they're not always drunk, right? They're, they're just drunk a lot of the time. And it's, then it's basically Victorian London. They are basically always drunk. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, it is Victorian London now. So oh, if, that's everything, we'll end, if that's everything, we'll end downtime there. Um, one other thing, pretty cool that you guys did from your previous scores and escapades is you gained enough reputation as a crew to, in true COVID fashion, increase the tier. <laughs> it's on brand and everything. I love it. That means we're so we have gone from a tier zero gang to a oh, tier two. one gang, which basically oh. just increases. Um, sure. The amount of resources you can have available to you, it basically makes your layer a little bit more luxurious like... and a bit more prepared and equipped. So people can still go to school and we're still allowed shopping, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Just... Yes, can... That's fine. Five guys are still open. You can still carouse yes. with your friends. I, I know that that, <laughs> do, that, these things. I, I know that, that joke will eventually get dated. Um, but I'm kind of glad that eventually that joke will get dated because it yeah. means we'll be out of it. Don't worry, for now it's immortalised on the internet forever. <laughs> but yeah, so for the other, the one thing that you do have to do though in order to increase the tier of your gang is you have to pay coin. Normally you have to pay your next tier level times eight coin. However, your party has a patron who is a sort of money man for your crew who Boss. actually yeah. halves the amount you have to pay. So. Shall we um, play out, gentlemen? You all going to meet with your patron 
to get your gang's reputation solidified. Worth a jacket, isn't it? It's worth a jacket moment. Well, I think he, you know you got to wear your hat if you go to see your, uh, your money, man. Left all my, might have left all my props downstairs. Well, the one prop I yeah. own. Oh, just before we do that, guys. Sorry. Huh? Ooh. Carry on. Seven. What's the uh? It's the four. No, really, don't think about it. It's fine. It's, it's, an, engagement, tell you. it's an engagement roll. It's, it's an engagement DM. roll. He's What's rolling it? an engagement what roll. What are, you, what are you doing there, you, you sneaky boy? So, anyway, ignore that. That's fine. So, what we have um is your patron. When you met him originally, he gave you a meeting place, and that you could go to see him if you ever were in need of him, or if you were ever to, like, say, need him to do anything for you. So the meeting place that he gave you is on the Moon's Daughter Club in Brightstone, which is the richest borough of Duskfall. And it's basically this club is a place where the nobility go to conduct um, their business. Because I believe the, the patron is actually related to one of the party members. Is he not? Silas. He is related he, to Silas. He may um, be slightly related, yes. Yes, we all have so have the patron that we have is a Tikaros, like Silas, which is the race of... A lot of people think they might actually be demons, but never been proven. There's no legal There's no legal basis for it, obviously. I think, law law I think under maritime law, they count as goldfish. Um, yes, uh, of course. T technically, they are well, red herrings. One from a fair, then. Red, red herrings. herrings. Red herrings. Are the red herrings, yes. It's, there. it's canon. But, so, you all approach the Moon's Daughter in Brightstone. Again, quite a large, elaborate, sort of marble-pillared club. Big, grand staircase with a red velvet carpet leading in. A lot of people walking around in very fine clothing. Canes, monocles, bowler hats, you know the sort. And you all go in, and there is a grand, grand open entrance where you're greeted by a footman who ushers you through into the big open dining area. And you can see off in the corner is a booth with... Quite, it's quite a low lit area of the car, sort of quite a dimly, dimly lit corner. He doesn't and you can like see a solitary dropping. figure sat in said booth. He doesn't appearing like to like make eye contact with you as you walk in. Take, take our hats off and uh, calmly walk over to the booth. Are you all following? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So as you all get closer, you obviously see, you, you see this figure more clearly. It is a. Um, Quite a well-dressed individual in a white shirt with a black tie and a crimson colored waistcoat and he is like one of the features of the tikaros as a race i should say well as more of a, a race kin whatever word you want to use is that they always have a feature a defining feature amongst on their person which is considered demonic which is silas for example wears a flat cap to hide a couple of tiny little demon horns but this individual he has yellow eyes the whites of his eyes are yellow and also you can see in the sort of in his temples and that sort of stretching down his cheek is scaled and it's sort of so he kind of high again he's, he sort of wears quite a wide brimmed hat he sort of sits like this but yeah you can definitely tell that he's got a sort of scaled side to his face but as you all approach the table he gestures at the table there is glasses and drink already laid out for you what do Evening, uh, Mr. Mr. Greenback. Ah, oh, yes, I remember that. He looks up and down at you. He doesn't. He's a pretty good one. Uh, it seems you've made a name for yourselves these past few weeks. I have to admit, I'm actually quite impressed. Like I, I didn't think much of you when my dear nephew brought you brought you to my door and. I was like, yes, uh, if he has to get it out of his system, then maybe he must. But actually, no, you have you actually seem to have been a bit successful and made a name for yourselves. I, I commend you, gents. I did tell you would be a, a fine leader. You did say that at the time, and I, but I do distinctly remember sort of laughing internally. Well, you did laugh what? very externally as well, if I remember rightly. I, mm. You did think, laugh think directly in my have, face, sir. We'll, we'll have a flashback to, like, from me now to this moment because this wasn't played out on stream. This was after the, like, the stream began after this meeting. But yeah, you remember at the time it was one of those very 
cliche like quintessential comedy moments where somebody says something they try and be serious and then there's a couple of seconds of silence and then the other person just starts barely laughing you're probably and, like wondering. leaning over the table like dry heave laughter that's so that's kind of what the scene plays out as and he sort of again we cut back to the present and he sort of sat there like i think my reaction was actually quite tame um yes in the grand scheme of the thing way you handle things absolutely was but you did laugh in his face and you did say your odds of him surviving. The it's... odds of him surviving more than a few days was slim. That did tell you he was yeah. good. He's actually a real master, you know, of maritime law. I just thought I'd mention that. You've... Yes, this this is something that I've I've seen prop up a few times in your own correspondence, and quite frankly, I don't really understand it. Well, That's the advantage of maritime law. Now, moving on, when I pointed out this fellow with his fist. You said he was nothing but, can I quote you if you don't mind me saying it? Please do. A dumb schmuck. Um, and I understand where you were coming from, but he's actually proved to be more than just that. I do, I do not understand. Uh, what is this word, schmuck? I, uh, uh, it it means brave warrior. It means, it means brave, brave warrior. warrior. Yeah. I'll, I'll lean over and whisper, it means idiot. He reaches behind him at this point, sort of pulls out um, a piece of paper, sort of places it on the table in front of you. It's a hospital record, and he slides it towards you, and he sort of taps at the top, and you'll notice that it's, a, it's obviously a, a, a record of a person who was admitted to hospital with quite severe injuries, sort of facial injuries. Yes. And at the time, he sort where he's tapping, it sort of lists occupation postman. Yes. <laughs> yes I'm yes. sure he's had he's had yes. lots of challenges, and. Uh, uh, you, but you've yeah. got to understand, I say pointing out in his favour, listen, let me tell you something, where we had come up with convoluted, ridiculous, overboard plans, this man had actually successfully managed to, how can one put this, get the information with minimal effort. And if that required tipping over a postman, so be it. Great work, I say. Is that like cow tipping, but for posties? <laughs> um, Just spill his drink at this point. Or like, young lady. He looks a bit thoughtful and he's like... Mm. Maybe you have a point, yes. And then that and this one, to... I know, I don't... Actually, I do remember... He points a gift card at this point. I, I remember you. I did... You were a face I recognised when my near nephew hey. brought... What have I... Oh, how, how do you remember me, sir? He produces a very large newspaper clipping and like, <laughs> like, like, lays it out on the table. And it's the one that you recognise. Oh, 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 oh. Lean over it and say, ah, yes, the... The peanut sheller. It was a very unfortunate incident. I know why it did that. Um, thankfully, nobody was hurt, though. Which was just the building. You know, buildings are replaceable. He just, he just sort of leans over again. He sort of, he's, he he looked like he's looking for like a, a lumber of casualties, but obviously there isn't one. So he's like, and and to okay. his credit, if I may say as well, to be honest, I think he was ahead of his time because we've subsequently learned just how serious the subsidence problems are in Dustwell. So he's correct. It wasn't his fault. The peanut sheller was just the tip. Of the iceberg of what really happened. sir uh, hey. buildings fall down all the time and Absolutely. sometimes no one's yes, to blame do, so uh, i think the peanut sheller might have just been a red herring except except yeah. when you attach horses to them isn't that right aldrich i was, was trying to save your skin for the peanut dish sheller but yes we uh yep well, you're good to me trying to make a pun but i will let it slide i also oh, i don't think we should talk really? and waste this man's time he has he has lots on his mind he he does not need us and our, how do you say it, schmuckery. Is that uh, the word? Good word. Good word. Good word. Sarcastic. 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 I, I've got to say here, that's rich coming from you. He's actually used that word against me many a times. He's called me a schmuckery. I've got to be honest. But you are right. <laughs> Gentlemen, is there a reason you have summoned me here? Don't get me wrong. I enjoy, I enjoy the brandy in this place, but we've come is there to a pay point our, to this? We've come to pay our dues. You backed us. It's time for us to pay you back. Well, very good. I will accept that. I will put in motion what I need to to I know the money see that you are properly money. set up and taken care of. And I know, you know what? I know the money means nothing to you. I know it means nothing to you, but it's the gesture that counts, right? I mean, if the money really does mean nothing to you, though, we can, you know, Keep it, get rid of it for you. Snaps his fingers at you at this point. I put the bag on the table. <laughs> the bag, puts it down where the paperwork was. Ah. Very good. Now we will continue. Sorry. 
we're being interrupted by cats. Oh, get them in that point sit now, boys. <laughs> so who's this? We, if oh, we had known really that we could pay with cats. Well, yeah. oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that to you. Hey, who, who, who was that? That was Lila. Hello, Lila. Every, everybody, like, this is black cats are being unlucky. Black cats are the best cats. Yeah, I bet they Carry are. On. <laughs> so, yeah. So he takes the bag of money, puts it down where the paperwork came from, and he says, Very good. I believe that's our business concluded, gents. I will endeavor to spread the word of you. You will be more equipped than you were before. I can promise you that. That's appreciated. And I do hope that this will lead on to future encounters that will be profitable for all of us. We hope so. He raises his glass towards you at this point. I will... Uh... Ah, I can actually do it today. I'll be well, home. I can, I'm the only one to come. That sounds like a planning error, mate. Um, <laughs> yeah, Aldrich will stand up at this point, say... Thank you again, Mr. Greenback, for your, uh, your your faith in our... And then he like looks around at all the fancy people and he goes, business dealings. Totally legal Indeed. business dealings. Indeed. Goodbye. Also, please call me... Please call me Ramira. Yes, Mr. Gr I mean, Ramira. Aldrich? Until we meet again. And, uh... Andy. And we and we go. Um, a small doff uh, of the hat, and off we go. Is there is is there one of the decanters on the table? Yes, there is. Not I, anymore. I, it's not. I, I, I like grab the decanter, and I'm like, if you do not mind, uh, this is the first uh, Akron spirit I've been able to drink that does not taste like shit. <laughs> you tea leaving bastard. May, may I? And I like go to like put it under my Ooh. jacket. <laughs> may I? <laughs> of course, that's yeah. He's, at that point, so he, he gestures all and yes, go ahead. So you do it, and then he sort of as you walk off, he leans into Silas and he goes, "He does know that that's like literally the cheapest thing they have, right? That is the cheapest bottle they have in this place. It's, it's been drinking the leaders' bottles from down in the bottom of the boat. No more needs to be said. It's not necessarily the most kosher stuff that's ever been produced. So what you've just given him there, in his eyes, will be regarded as champagne. Yeah, yeah. but we all know it's crap. We do indeed, don't he's we? Happy. If he's happy, frankly, I'm happy because I've seen what he can do when he gets angry, and I don't like it, really. <laughs> well, I, will, I, will, I look forward to future meetings where we can recount tales of such endeavours. But for oh, now, please let me enjoy my. Oh, of course. I apologise. I back off and leave him to his evening ahead. It's only brandy if it's from the brandy region. And get the hell out of there because that spancy club is too. Oh, is it sparkling so petrol? You leave your patron, Mister Greenback, to his fine brandy, having handed over what you need to to set things in motion to give your skills a little bit more of a reputation a little bit more of a luxury and more preparedness to go on and do more crime because that's the aim of the game guys do more crime yay more. More. So, um, <laughs> that's obviously the scene that we wanted to do as a party is there any scenes that anybody wants to do individually again I'll just go round Orlan we'll go we we'll start with you and then we'll head round if anybody else wants to do anything sort of in the in the sort of interlude between leaving the moon's daughter and heading back to the lair please go ahead so oh, first uh can we like make up details and stuff is that okay you do what you want okay so as we're heading back Orland's like drinking this uh this brandy he's not really saying much and um, he's got his like bright red like fire red hair and uh he he starts to know you see him start noticing like these weird flowers they're like white flowers and they're like strategically placed until we get to the boat and it's um one of them is like pinned up to the boat with like a knife handle in it um okay. someone's like shoved a um you will shoved know, our beautiful boat you'll notice if you see if you look on uh one of the 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 lapels of um Orland's jacket, you know, like the the shoulder bars that military uniforms have. Um, it's the same flower shape as what's on them. So it's like Scotland's national flower. 
and um, I like go up to the the door, pull it out, and I like look at you all. I'm like, you need to go inside. Okay, well, we'll go inside. Uh, Why? Wait. Not not noticing the flowers. Why? Because of uh, you do not want to be here when the person who left this and I show him the flower arrives. Do you need some backup? I've gone inside. I don't need to know about violence. Not 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 yet. I will signal. You will probably hear somebody drop onto the floor. Okay. <laughs> Aldrich Aldrich like um taps the mooring of the boat where the rope is and he's like well, if you need anyone to do some um, maritime uh, rigging, you uh, you let us know, and I go inside. I will sit on top in a deck chair, but in the I mean, are we? Is it dark at this point? Is it midday? What time of day is it? She last this. Well, it's in the evening. You met you met your patron in the evening, so we're sort of getting on to evening and darker. In that case, I'll sit on top sit on top of the boat in a deck chair with the it's newly it. built pistol. Ready. What, what's he up to? Boss, what's he doing? Uh, I think some Vendetta Scovlin warship's about to go down outside. Uh, oh! So, just get ready to kill some people. You know, classic uh, classic. one of us has got a Vendetta, so we need to kill 15 people kind of uh, kind of situation, I uh, think. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully they don't come in the next 35 minutes, because the boat is currently starting to go down a little here. Um, yeah, so hopefully it's we don't get too many on the boat. If they are going to get on the boat, can they go on the left-hand side of the vessel? Because Why don't we kill them down. before they get on the boat? Yeah, could you just let me know in case, you know, I don't understand how these... Yeah, one sec, I like open the door to the boat. <laughs> As you go to open the door, like I hear you like grab the handle and you just hit, hit, hit like a boot, like... Doo -doo and I'm like, you, I, and I lean against the door so you can hear me. And I'm like, you can come out now. And uh, basically... Only Disgar can, Disgar can see it, but basically you see this very finely dressed, basically female version of Orlan. Ooh, that's but terrifying. A lot, more, a lot more dainty, but but as like as sharp in terms of features and like. This must be your sister. Ah. Uh... And uh, mm. basically, she's on the edge, like she's dressed in like fine, a crowen like. Uh, jewelry and uh, like a beautiful dress and she's like got footman and everything and she's like there like on the on the edge um of the uh dock. She's first in line i say you're no. inside right now no, i'm coming out he's asked us uh, I'm, I'm literally blocking the door you guys are inside i'm i'm sat on the top of the boat in a deck chair with the gun ready the, but my newly created gun just in case it was a, a fight apparently oh. it's not is she first in line i shout out the door or oh, out the shutters uh you wouldn't know it's my sister you oh, just because you can't see her oh, true. Like, windows. well are, are oh, we well. so poor we can't afford windows in our boat no, that's pretty oh. true, actually. We, we don't know what his sister looks like. so yeah, you, Or if he's got a sister. We've had to... Or any you, yeah, you, admittedly, you don't know anything about my family. You just know you found me he's, in he's, a He's the guy ditch. who punches shit. He's got friends. We'll, we'll I, 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 I was going to say, I think, I think waiting for a moment and listening would be the way to go here. He, he's got he's got problems he needs to deal with, and that's fine. You know, But just please keep them on the left-hand side of the vessel. Um, I, uh, so she's there. Like looking very beautiful, but also looking like she's going to fucking murder me. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's got quite long at this point. Like, would you say her hair's quite long? Sort of oh yeah, long flowing hair, like ring, like proper like aristocratic ringlets. Yeah. Like you could, without without knowing, you could barely tell by her style. The only thing that gives her away is her hair. You barely tell that she's Scotland because of yeah. the fact that what she's so again, She walks around the corner, like you say sort of you sense i'm sure you know that she's got a couple of a couple of blokes sort of hanging back in the shadows but you definitely know that they're there she sort of walks forward she's quite sort of as you would she's holding her hands together she's got quite a rigid posture like and she sort of approaches you well i'm glad to see that still gets your attention ah 
Sistra Ma. It is good to see you. It's, it's, it's been a while. Ma. Yes, it has. It's, it still amazes me that you've managed to keep the accent. How can you live with that guttural, awful voice this time? It is the it's, voice of our blood. Much, I have made a life for myself in the city by adapting. And she sort of just spreads her arms akimbo at that point. As I'm sure you can see, it's worked out very well for me. I wish you would do the same sometimes, brother. You made a life for yourself as a traitor. You boil from the inside of your very blood. That is what you do. So do not yeah. lecture me, little sister. Yeah. Fists or clench at that point, like... Brother, we were never going to win the war. You I might not have time to, had to. I did what I had to. Down. Who is that? That is an associate of mine. You do not need to pay him any attention. You and your men focus on me, because if they step foot on this boat, one of them will die, and I will kill that man with the other one. Do I make myself clear? Sorry, Orlan, um, the boat's sinking a little bit. Make sure you kill them off the boat. That, thanks. She sort of like put waves her hand at that point, and you can see the two bars mm -hmm. sort of retreat. She's like, "They're of no concern of yours right now, brother." You hear the ominous. You hear the ominous click of a hammer uncocking as they step backwards. She sort of tenses a bit. Like he will not shoot you. Do not worry. I guess he I is... should just. I guess I should just say what I came to say. And please, please. apologize. I apologize for any misdeeds that we may have in the past i just i'm pleading for you to try and adopt the lifestyle a bit more i've seen the refugee camps and they're no place to live you could do more for them in the society you could meld with society you could earn more money legitimately you could help them in other ways like i'm trying to do but you know the influence of women in akaros they're, they're behind the times it's difficult for me to build a reputation and to build myself up to the point where I can help. What? Have you realised that laying on your back does not make you stand taller? Oh my god. <laughs> we need to She's open that door her immediately. Shoulders, her shoulders sort of hunch at that point. And like, Damn. Uh, I can see you're still... You still hold animosity to me for... what I did. But again, I can only say that I believed it be in the best interests of our people. I still believe me to be one of you, brother. Our mother lives in squalor because of you. Our mother, our father is dead. I almost died. Our people live in huts and shanties and tents. So do not tell me about the best for our people, little sister, little mercy. For you threw away your Scovlin name for what? For uh, General, uh, what is his name? We pulled a statue down of him because he is that much of a dick. He took a liking to me and I saw an opportunity, brother. Please believe me. I simply saw a way long term that we could fix our people. We were losing the war. We were already lost. If you can't see that, you're blind and foolish. What can I say? Red hair, red veins, and red mist. I can see I'm wasting my time here. A Little sister, well. before you go, maybe you go see mother, show her all your finery, make her so proud of her darling daughter, her little pearl and then you can explain to her why because she does not know i do not tell her i do not break her heart she believes you gone she believes you missing she believes you out there somewhere in the camps because so, i do not break her heart i save our country you do nothing so you see her sort of shaking a bit with her right hand and she sort of breathes deeply a few times I will go and see our mother when I have a way that I can help everyone. I only hope that one day that you'll see that too. 
for now I will say goodbye. Clearly I cannot tempt you, and clearly you have not changed for now. I will see you again someday, I hope. Under Go much back to your home, master. I do not want you. Be gone. Out of my sight. She does sort of... You can tell by her face that she does take offence to that comment, because she sort of... Again, she kind of composes herself. Gives a small curtsy. Nods. Turns and leaves in the same sort of gliding, poised motion. As she, like, walks away, I wait for her to, like, be out of sight. And I, like, wait for a couple of seconds so I see the two men, like, shift around the corner because they go, like, a delayed sort of thing to see if I do anything. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as they're out of sight, you just see me put my hand through the door. Like, like... <laughs> <You're not laughs> at the same time. I basically, basically like, an inch above Aldrich's head. Like... Aldrich, take level two off. Off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, uh, I'll hop down from the, the top of the boat and... Uh... Orlin, you, uh, you're you not telling us everything, are you? You will lead an interesting secret life, don't you? It does not concern you, and it does not matter. All, I think it all very much concerns us. All these connections and aristocracy, or beaten aristocracy, as the case may be. Aldric opens the door. It concerns all of us. Aldric opens the door at this point and goes, Wait, we, we, we'll do a litmus test for if this concerns us. Are you still down for illegally making money by stealing shit? <laughs> as long as it helps my people and I do not have to get in bed with your across and uh, boy lovers, then yes, I am Just fine. to clarify, that means yes, you're still down for stealing things. Yeah. Could you just clarify Doesn't concern us, about... I think we're all fine. Could you clarify a bit about the boy lovers? That concerns me. I know that you're these Acrosians, uh we've uh, we know that they have a thing for uh, younger boys. Uh, I, they... frankly, sir, I like men and women, not boys and girls. He's got a point. Yeah, let's be fair. He's been very consistent. <laughs> and you and... just see that Orlin, Orlin is be- bearing in mind, this is probably the most shaken and most afraid you have ever seen Orlin in your life. Like, as in all the time you've known him. Like, he mm. is... Yeah. Visibly yeah. afraid and visibly like I like I like what you've just done to the door though. That's handy because we do need another porthole. So that's we a good another place. hole in the boat, didn't we? Yeah. You know what I cheer you oh, up, Paulin? Well I I do not know tell me. Do you want to go intimidate someone with me? Yeah, you because I saw a little boy scan from past five minutes ago. I I could I could It's uh, in the name of a good cause. It, it allows me to hit someone because I cannot hit women and uh, fair enough that are not combat because technically she, my sister is no longer a combatant. Well, they are gang members, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure combatants. Fine. I see. I see. Yes. Da. And I like basically like just go in, take my nice coat off, put my scrap jacket on, like put my hat on, like I grab some grease from a. Uh, uh, Giscard's like thing and like start rubbing <laughs> it through my hair. Yeah, like, the ax- my actual grease I've got in a tub for mechanical yeah. purposes. Yeah, I like put that through my hair before I put the hat on. I'm like, what do you I, want? Uh, I've got a couple uh, questions I, I, for the GM. Um, but go ahead. Go, go ahead first, James, and then I'll ask I was going to say, I look disapprovingly at your use of axle grease. Well, you, you know, mucky axle grease. And uh, at, at the sounds of, do you want to come intimidate someone? I, I, I will also agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, how far above us is the Path of Echoes on the tier list? Ooh, do give me one second just to confirm that. Because we're about to go put the screws to uh, Narcos, um, the Path of Echoes leader. <laughs> He's two tiers above you. Really? Two tiers. Above you. Two? Two schmoo. That's fine. Yeah, that's, that's the tiers in this game is a good is of, you are a gang so in terms of tiers it's about the size of the gang a tier 1 gang is about 6 people a tier 3 gang is about 50 people yeah, 50 schmifty uh, head snakes all good um, what was the name of the gang? Path of Echoes Path uh, so Narcos he's not the, the full leader is he he's just like a lieutenant right? Yeah, he's Narcos, like a is, leader, isn't Narcos he? is like one of the 
Yeah, one of the lieutenants, basically. Excellent, that's fine. Yeah. We're putting the screws down. He like on the leads his own, his own group, basically. Cool. So what would you like to go and do? So, okay. A little... <laughs> There's a lot of sense. I am very intrigued by this, Ben, because you I... Want... Are you two go ahead. on your own? No, I'm taking all of you. Oh, we're all right. going. Are you telling us exactly what, what we're doing? Right, so, okay. Oh, you're not mentioning it till we get there. I'll... Okay, I'll tell you all your individual roles when they're needed. Uh, You've got a job. Oh, right, it's a job. Oh, right, okay, yeah, no problem. It's Austin. kind of a job, but it's it's, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, We're right, doing something second. altruistic for once. Okay, we'll tag along. Excuse and me, this... I just need to fall off my chair real quick. <laughs> so, uh, first things first, I need a flashback um, to me and Cobb listening in to um, basically Narcos talking shit about the eels. Okay. If I could do that as a flashback. You set that up then and I'll... Uh, so basically uh, Aldrich knows that his big brother talks shit about Cobb's gang. Like He, he knows that Narcos does this because he's like, oh, why, why would he join that little crappy gang when we've got the uh the path of echoes um so that's why Cobb keeps coming to us with jobs instead of going to his brother because his, his brother always like piles him off um so that's that's the first thing we do so me and me and um Cobb are basically like um listening in from the cellar of that pub because it has a um it has like a canal going into it and that's where they drop off the the beer kegs underneath yeah, cool, I'm down with that. Okay, so uh, do we need any more for that scene, or do you want me to roll, or what, what do you want for that? No, we'll set, like I say, we'll, we'll set that up. We'll say that you ask Cobb to get you into the Devil's Tooth basement. Yeah. And, and he's then... like, oh, yeah, all right, all right. I don't see why, but I'm fine. Just, mate, you'll, you'll see. Um, and I've I've basically sent um, a correspondence to Narcos being like... Uh, how how much should we use the eels in basically in order to trigger him to have a conversation about uh, his little brother's gang? Cool. So you talk shit, right? <laughs> so yeah. So assumably you're both you and Cobb are down in the basement. Yeah. Sort of gets this letter, sort of from you, and he's sort of you can hear him sort of reading it, and you're there with Cobb in the basement. I think. Again, how I want to play this is you say you basically told Cobb, "Oh yeah, this is going to be this is going to be a white one. Like, you're going to see how how much he fucking like he doesn't give a shit about you." Yeah, he's sort of like you see you see an he's he's chatting with another one of the lieutenants, and he's like, oh. "I think it's the I'll tell you this it's the other it's the other guy who sort of opens the letter because it's just addressed to the, yeah. to the gang," and he's sort of reading there like. <laughs> Fucking eels. <laughs> fucking wannabes. Aren't they just right? And at that point, this is the other guy you hear. Fucking wannabes. Ugh. Never be as good as us, will they, mate? And at that point, you hear a chair just clatter to the ground. And you hear Narcus's voice at the other end. You're like, you want to fucking keep talking, mate? Why did he go Australian then? I don't know. <laughs> you want to fucking keep talking? He's like... Fuck, man! We sort of—you're only hearing this, but you're like, "Fuck you! You do not speak shit about my fucking brother." Oh, that doesn't really help us. That's fine. We can just—we can just threaten his life. Classic. That's fine. So there's a cob sort of down there at that point with you, like again, he, a sort of a look on his face of. See, I told you, we would come down here and see what your brother really thinks, and he really appreciates you. He's not really like he's sort of at that point he's sort of like half listening. He's like it's it's clearly something like it's an it's an affection he's never heard before in person. But he's like he's been doing his thing and has never been interrupted, but has never has also never heard of it being praised for it. So he's like That screws us, but that's fine. It's nice that Cobb's brother loves apologize him. if apologies if that wasn't what you were thinking, but I was again, hoping he would just talk shit because he was quite dismissive. No, I think that's something then. Um, no, that's fine. Right, okay. Then I'm going to send Cobb off on an errand, and we're just going to walk in and threaten him, I guess. I guess that's fine. 
Um, I would need the Whisper to do some spooky shit. I need yeah. some, some ghosts oh, to show up. Maybe some rolling fog. Uh, Aldrich's basically like explaining like a really bad Penny Dreadful those novel my, to you. Those are my two perfect abilities. I can make, I can make, uh, I can compel a ghost to literally rampage through the location where he is, and follow it up with a lovely tempest of problems to follow, roll in behind. Excellent, excellent. Right. Chairs and tables spinning out of control with some sort of dark fog entering their place. Or and then can you, carry... Silas? Or no, can no. you? Possibly. How many points do you have in a tune? Two. You can, you can, you can, you can at least be a fog machine, right? I, I don't... I'm no, not it's gonna, fair. It's, I'm not it's okay, demo. actually. It's not... I mean, it's... Somebody would... Examining this in detail would probably be able to tell that it is... Like, it's not completely natural. There's definitely something off about this. They might yeah, but I think that's what wants, doesn't it? Yeah, he no, we want it to be spooky. Okay. That's, that's fine. We don't yeah. mind them. He, he wants so it. You can have what you describe, but somebody might look, but not as authentic, maybe, as you wish it to be. A, a creature compelled to rampage. What location are you hoping for him to be in? What is the, his normal... The pub. the pub. To rampage through the pub, throwing chairs and everything out the way, and then rolling in behind it, it's this fog and this whirlwind tempest arriving shortly behind Whatever is left of the place as it's transformed and made into a mess comes our fearless leader. And I want these two behind me. I want you with your new special gun, please, Giscard. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably roll up the backs. <laughs> yes. Uh, Aldrich wearing his, uh, his trademark bowler hat. Are you walking into the Devil's Tooth at this point with this following you? Yeah, yeah. That goes first, and then I that step in. First. With the, like, with the 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 light sort of green scene, glow. That, as you walk in, you see the I prop up the ring with my Maritime's before. Law and pen and paper ready. <laughs> so you see the poor bar girl from before, like trying to stop all of the stock from the bar just being absolutely destroyed by this whirlwind. You see Narcus and his other friends, sort of in there. They're all sort of they're genuinely not sure what's going on. They're walking. Their eyes are darting left and right. Not not, us. <laughs> to walk in as the fog and like the green glow of the ghost. He looks at you at that point as if to say, "Okay, that wasn't expected." We have come to bargain, and then I like walk over to the table and put my hat down on the table as the fog kind of dissipates, and then I hope my my two boys are here. Oh yeah, I'm there. I'm like, <laughs> like looking around at the destruction. Now, Chris, at that point, he's, he recognises you at this point. Because, again, he knew you from before, Aldrich, as well, remember? Yeah, because he threw me out, so of, he still... out of the game. So he sits down. He sort of looks... He's... The other members of the Path of Echoes at that point that are in the bar are kind of all sprawled all across the floor, a bit dazed, and he's like... He sort of slams his fist down on the floor. I'll keep him covered. Well, he sort of slams his fist down on the table. And he's like, are any of you lot going to help clear up this mess? I do not see why it's not a problem. Say, Would that be all right? I, mean, I don't see why it's not a problem, problem Discard, like. do you? I don't know. Uh, it's um, We just walked in here. I don't understand why he's angry at us. Didn't make this mess myself. I uh, don't think I should be clearing up your mess. Yeah, I've been cleaning up the fucking mess, he says to them. No, you're within 20. All start all scrambling, like, to move, so his guys are now right. cleaning up the mess as we all... We sit down. I, I make sure these guys are stood up behind me, and I'll I'll sit down. No, I, I stay stood, and I've got my no, I've got my cookery knuckle duster thing out. I've got my some, scary weapon out. What exactly your, do you want, boys? Some of your pub has ended up in the nearby canal. That technically is a maritime law crime. I've got to let you know that. Just right, make sure Silas. 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 Send a couple of blue. What do you fucking want now? I've got a business proposal for you. Have you now? I do. Go on then. I have seen in your future. Narcos of the Path of the Echoes, an acquisition. Have you now? That I have. Now, uh, the Path of the Echoes, it's um, always looking to expand, isn't it? Bring others under its wing, its protection. You know, you don't want to start gang wars in the night market. Who the fuck wants a gang war in the night market? Maybe somebody would profit from it. 
No, you would definitely lose a shit ton of money when your buildings start getting pulled down. You see, buildings in the night market, mate, not very well fucking made. <laughs> oh, no. He does have a sort of look about him at this point, like, maybe he has a point. He's still holding his, he's holding his resolve, but he's sort of, you, you do sort of hint a little bit of a reaction from him. You see, the thing about boats is, mate, if they sink, you can buy another. A house getting pulled down. They don't just sell houses off the back of carts, mate. He, look, he's, he gives you a look of realisation at this point, and he's like, uh, can I just say, bravo. Thank you. Now, unfortunately, oh, your proposal, then. unfortunately, your recent rivals, the Dimmer Sisters, have taken a significant downturn in luck, haven't they? <laughs> He, he snorts at the prospect that you ever considered them rivals. <laughs> and because of your, if not rivals, a little bit of a pain in your backside, I think that gang would be, uh, let's say, predisposed with their current financial situation to a buyout. Under those terms of a buyout, you would give them protection, make sure they're all cushy. All right, Governor? You're asking me to look out for these. I'm asking you to buy the gang. In fact, I'm well, telling you, you should buy the gang. Well, now, coming to my own conclusions off my own back, I'm thinking that you might have a point here, my friend. Maybe we would be beneficial. I mean, you've seen how useful gangs that maybe people don't think are affiliated with us can be. I'm sure Cobb's helped you out quite a lot. Always been helpful once Am I wrong? Bit of I, know you, ask, you, right. I know also here you're turning him into a bit of a drunk. And he points behind him at this point, as you can see, like there is a, a pair of feet sort of sticking out into the pub. You did that. Calm the boy's nerves. He saw a bit too many. Um, and then I look at Silas. Apparition's the correct word? Yeah, apparitions. And really, when you consider the state of your place, frankly, I, I'm not surprised he's blind drunk, really. You see, uh, poor Cobb yeah, here. He'll learn one day. Frequents our... Uh, oh, he, he looks at his gang and he goes, a haunt, I guess, gentlemen. <laughs> yes. I know of it. Aye, uh, we've got a bit of a ghost problem, so to stop your little brother going mad, I... Uh, Gave him some spirits, so he wasn't so afraid of the spirits. Huh. Oh, always good to start starting them young. Normally we start with beer, but it takes a it takes a lot. They don't they can't always stomach a lot of it. Spirits now that's that's some wishful thinking. That will get them tolerance up quite early. We'll start doing that with the rest of them. Thanks for the advice. Uh, I produce a bottle of brandy. So you want me to there. buy up these? So from what I understand it. These Dimmer Sisters, there's not really a proper gang no more. There's more just a, some girls trying to make their own way in life. So I'll more than happily look out for them if that's what you so desire. I, want you I don't to buy think the I want to pressure them necessarily. From a specific one. Well, as I've said, you want me to buy the gang. Karis, you know of her? He sort of looks thoughtful at the point. He goes, Oh, no. The one who was, yeah, she was, she was hunting around the city for information for a little while. Oh, that's what I want you wanted to, to procure some services. Of... She doesn't know you did it, does she? It doesn't fucking matter what anyone knows, does it? Does she know, mate? If she knows that I did it and she comes knocking on my door, I'll tell her who told me to do it and uh, how I did it and perhaps a location of a pub that someone else could do it to. In a love letter. Tell you what, Aldrich. I had my doubts about you when I first met you. All those years ago. But you know what, mate? You've changed. And I think you'll do real good in this world, my friend. You've done everything right here today. So, you know what? 
Yeah. Go on then. You want me to take on this Karis girl? Let's call it done. I would like to. Add, I put the cookery in the table. With a douche. I would like to add one more condition to this. Did you stab it into the table, or just like yeah. place it? I, I stab it into the table, like to. Like... Do you mind? Just no, I do not, and I do not. I do not give a fuck. But I will tell you this: you put those women to good work. Woman, like, mate. Those girls to good work. They message. They seamstress. They fight. No. They do not fuck. Okay, that one. Yeah, don't make them all. Oh, that'd be fucked. Well, I, I was assuming you were going to use them to he do looks a bit cult ritual. This boy, like, mate, what the fuck do you think kind of gang we're running here? What do you think this place is? It's not fucking brothel. He uh, has got a point. The, the path of echoes. You've just destroyed all the fucking merchandise. Just in case. Here's I an idea, mate. Know. I'll make you an offer. I'll do this for you. If you, and he points at the bar, replace that shit that you just fucking did whatever you just did with. I you actually do this and a legitimate running business for me, and I'll do what you ask me of. How drunk do you want your customers? And then I'd like mm -hmm. pull out the, the bootleg uh, gasoline brandy and I'd put it on the table. He takes it. <laughs> oh, yeah, more of that, mate. Good. I'll send you over some cases to replace yeah. the spirits divined to do on this excellent oh. day. Right, I believe we're off. Any other, uh, anything else to say, gentlemen? No, we all good. All good. Right, good luck getting your pub in order, uh, Narcos. Pleasure doing business with you as always. You could say nice doing business with Narcos. Now you've got some nitros. Enjoy. Are you sure you do not want me to? Are you, to are you leaving? Are you leaving the bottle? Yeah, I have the bottle. He grabs it, turns around. Come on, time for a masterclass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. A math class. <laughs> right. So, that's what you wanted to do. You want so just to just to summarize, obviously, just so I'm clear, you wanted Narcus to he's take basically gonna... and the sisters under the under his wing. As... Yeah, he's going to pay Karis to basically like assimilate the gang. So Karis will get some money for her house, and the gang will be looked after. Be more money for the house she's already bought. Yeah, that's cool. I'm down with that. So, anyway, so that's that's obviously what you want to do. Apologies if I I didn't want to sound like a dick earlier, but no, no, I no. I, I if 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 Cobb's brother loves him, Cobb's brother loves him. I, it was a gamble. Yeah, that's cool. So, any that's your little scene. Anyone else want to do anything scene wise? Um, probably actually testing the uh, newly made gun would be good. Before Ooh, we on, probably, probably slot it in as a flashback before. Um, we go out gallivanting with it. Um, yeah. Are you getting the, doing... the bootleg brandy like to shoot like a, as a series of bottles and every time you shoot one they just set on fire because they're out of content? <laughs> no, because it's going to be on the boat. Actually, yeah, I could just hock them in the water and shoot them and there'd be fire on the water. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so I'll hock up, like half a dozen in the water, just like three in each hand. Jink. Um, take the gun out, stand on top of the, stand on top where the, later on the, the deck chair would be and Bam, 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 bam. Like a cowboy would, like quick drawing it. If this goes, if this goes, if this goes, I'm gonna need a bigger boat. I'll try and summarize <laughs> the mechanics of how I think this could work. So, if you roll skirmish, because you have multiple points in that, I believe. I might do. I'm on the wrong tab. Good. Uh, yeah, there we yeah. go. That one. Skirmish. Uh, no, I don't have multiple points in skirmish. I also have one in skirmish. Oh. I have all the points in skirmish. That's you have the... all the points in skirmish. He does have all yep. the points in skirmish. Then roll skirmish for me, and we'll say. Tell you what. I've got more in wreck and tinker than I have in skirmish. Uh, no, it's not wrong. It's yeah, it makes sense actually. Two, two. So we'll say. So how I, how I would have this work is normally for. How, how you would basically roll for downtime. So you do multiple things the, the higher the number you roll. So we'll say that for this multiple shot gun, the higher that the number you roll when you're using it, you are the more shots you do. So if you've only okay. managed to so you, you've thrown a number of bottles. However, because you're still nearly practiced at it, you 
only get off a single shot. But with some practice, maybe you will be slightly more adept and you'll be able to get off a few shots. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I was I was hoping for a slight. Uh, I was going to say I was I was hoping for a mechanic that was slightly less than that, which was one shot, one round, one round reload. No, no you said it yeah. was a. I'll, I'll take that. Rounds. I'll take that. It was a win. No, believe the only yeah. person who hasn't had a personal C note is Sean's character. If you want. To. Yes, Sean. Is there anything you'd like to do? Yeah. One, just like a little yeah. private scene, and then we'll do a little bit of a thing, and then we'll wrap up. Yes, it's very simple. Um, at some point during this process, there'll be an evening where I would, I sometimes wander off. Sometimes it's to go to collect more spirits, but sometimes it's to be tuned with us for us. On this occasion, it's to go and tune with them. So I'd wander off into some area, burial area within the town. There must be somewhere where people are placed. Is there another mm -hmm. location? Well, there's the, there's the, um, Ground surrounding the whole crematorium, which you visited previously to perfect. Uh, make my from. would make my way back there, and uh, it would be bef you know if the place closes at a certain time, then it would be an hour before it closes. You know, enter in, look like you're there to see some grave, but you're not, and you're actually be searching for a spirit that occasionally contacts him. I'll let leave it up to you what that spirit looks like. You you can decide. Um, okay. There is a reason he's come to attune with the spirit this time because he's got to uh, reaffirm that um, th that everything he has put in place is still holds true. Okay, so yeah, you um, you wish to go hunting for this spirit essentially. So yeah, we I'll let you roll the tune. You got two in a tune, haven't you? Two, two in a tune. It all depends what happens. If nothing, you, if you could roll that kind of if I don't manage to do it, then I don't find it on this occasion. Then that's fine. It just becomes a sad scene of me wasting my time. No, so you. Um, so what we'll say is you do go to the grounds around the crematorium. There's sort of there's the main building itself where obviously the spirit wardens are based and all the processing is done and the funeral rites are conducted and all such. And then there are also memorials. There's no graves necessarily in Duskfall because obviously bodies are dealt with differently. This is good because the memorial, the, the, the where I would make my way slowly towards, it's always the final point I arrive at. Yeah, is the one yeah. that he's previously bought. Okay? Yeah, with so a black. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's how it looks, obviously. So you've got like almost as if like a soldier's graveyard. So you've got like the the sort of just the crosses strewn about the place to represent. Obviously, it's not a graveyard; it's just more of a a memorial. Uh, memorial. But you yeah. do. And oh, carry on. The plaque that he's bought has got the boss's name on it. Oh, that Silas has bought. You mean? Yeah, it's got okay. the boss's name on it. Okay. Is this ominous? Boss... Is this foreshadowing? Yeah, yeah, the boss doesn't know this, but I've had to I've had to buy this as part of what's going on behind the whip. But I'm protecting the boss, but he doesn't realise this. Maritime law is far more important than he realises right. at the moment. So um, you, so I, I thought you were so planning my murder fun. for a second. <laughs> I, thought this, I was about to write it down, but I didn't. So, so no, so yeah, you um you have this Yeah. So I say you go to the crematorium, you are sort of you're focusing your senses to try and find out. You walk around and you end your your little patrol as normal on this plaque that you found and you feel like this leave, i leave a replica bowler hat on the it's been there for quite a while hopefully it's still there and i feel like I always, you i always bring something new along so in this case it's a small bottle like a aperitif bottle with a little cork of shit nitros crap that he loves so i leave that on there as well yeah i think you sort of and what you do you, you put the bottle a, down a you small take wither of rope because it's very apt in a little noose yeah, I like it. But no, so you, what you do, like you say, you, you do this, you do your entire sort of normal patrol, you end with your little ceremony, and then you turn to leave thinking it's been unsuccessful, and you sort of see this shimmering apparition that's emerged. This is, this is what I hoped would not happen, but it would return. Okay. I, I have to let it approach. You do. It does sort. Of, it sort of floats. I mean, it's it's shapeless. It's the shapeless form that you've seen previously, done, and it's. I've done everything you've asked, and he, I've protected him. What more do I have to do to protect him? Sort of the spirit kind of floats. It floats sort of between you and the the, the sort of plaque that you've created in the little monastery, and it's sort of you can see it like you. It sort of. An arm sort of starts to form and it sort of moves through. The little bottle kind of falls over. And then it sort of, the arm continues sort of across the chest. The other arm tends to appear. 
torso downwards, and then you see the face. And it's... You're not having him. It's just simply, you're not taking him. His time is not up yet. Whatever you need, tell me now, and I will make sure it happens for you. But you need to tell me what it is you need. You're not having him. He's on that boat for a reason. I chose that boat for him to protect him. At water, he's safe. On dry land, he's always at a risk. So tell me, what it is you want? So you, again, you see the spirit at this point. It's, a, it's apparition has become human form, and it's sort of kneeling, and it's sort of waving its hands, sort of as if it's caressing the objects, but sort of just one well, thing. And it sort of it turns towards you, and the face... The face is that of a young Akrosi man, not dissimilar in age to what Aldrich would be, and just sort of looks up at you as if to say, You've done well so far, but. What more do you want? What more do I have to do? What more does he have to do? Don't You're not taking him yet. It's not his you time. He's got years ahead of him. I've seen he's got years ahead of him. Don't yes. you think you can interfere with our lives? He has years ahead of him. But he has years ahead of him with you at his side. Of course. And he sort of float he sort of stands at that point and sort of floats towards you. And sort of gets yeah. right up towards you and he's like Doesn't he? Oh, oh of course. Yes. Yes. As long as I stay at his side, everything will be fine, yes? I will not have what happened to me and what almost happened to him happen again. No, no, of course. I, I totally understand this. And I hope we have an accord of some kind because can well, we just be happy now? I, it's fair to say that you and I have always been close. I mean, it was I who unless showed you the ways of this art. Uh, yes, you have. You have. The reason you are so good at what you do is, look, I should say through my teaching. It's as much know. a curse. It's as much a curse as it is a pleasure. Let me tell you, it's it's not that easy. There are times where I have to get close to the spirits. I love the captain. He's a great boss. I think he can be destined for great things. But you've got to stop interfering. You've got to leave him alone. Can we at least agree now that my debt is paid? Yeah, this is over. Can you leave him alone, please? I wish no harm upon him. Oh, that's good. I never I have. Can't. I simply wish that he be protected from the spirits. Well, I've done I that. Know, you know me. I, ever since I have come what I am, I know the dangers of the spirit world, and I know just how much he likes to dabble in them. And I know that the dangers are there, and I cannot allow him to succumb to them. So I need someone like you to stick with him. And to show him that the spirit world can be good as well as bad. But oh, also think, to I ensure, and he goes very serious at this point, he's like, to ensure that nothing happens to him as it did to me. Yes. Now, you did mention previously that, and I, I, I quote me if I'm wrong, I mean, I don't wish to speak ill of the dead, as you know. Um, but wasn't it one of the criteria that he had to settle down at some point? This bit might be a sticking point. I have to be honest, I've struggled with this, and so has he. I simply wish for him to live his life as he sees fit. Oh, that's good. But that he is protected from what happened to me. Well, of course. Leave that with me. Now, that's good that you've come, and I appreciate the talk. But the time's getting on, and it is getting dark. So perhaps it's adios from myself. And we'll see you another time, maybe. Uh, we'll put it in the calendar. Somewhere a year or so down the line, would that be okay with you? Provided that you hold up your end of the bargain. None of that's going to change. look after him. If he, kicks, if he kicks me out of the gang, I, I you know... That, I can't protect him any further, can I? Well, then you... Again, he goes quite serious at this point. He's like, well, then you make sure he does not. No, I, I'm keeping him. And you straight stick by I'm, his I'm, side. Oh, I've, I've done everything. I can't even follow him to his club all the time. I do everything I can to keep with him. I mean, he Very pulls good. it along in every damn mission he wants to. I hate them. I've got to be honest. I hate them, but I follow him like a hawk. I follow him into the lion's den. And I have Very to come good. up with 
rules and regulations that are bare small scraps of the code to help him out in case we get pulled by the police. What more can I do? I appreciate all the things that you do. I do. I am aware oh, of all the things that, that you do. That reminds me. I pull out a small anchor. Must add that here. Admiralty Law. Thank you for it. Ha. Oh, God. I always enjoy these little displays you make. Uh, well, it's the least I can do. It me of... It's getting dark. I'm sorry to interrupt, but the time, I must get out. That's fine. Do a leave, leave me here with this shrine, if you would. Uh, yes. I Look can on. reminisce about Look our childhood. On. Look on, my friend. Enjoy. Enjoy the time you have here. And I'll see you again a year or so from now, perhaps. Keep up your job and I'll do everything keep I can. You again, it will be under pleasant circumstances. That we have an accord, that is good enough, and I'm glad we've reaffirmed it. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I back off very, very happy at this point. Please leave me now with oh, my thoughts. I will sort of stumble over a couple of graves and then start running. And you leave this apparition sort of sat or sat, again, figurative term, cross-legged, staring at this little shrine that you have made to Aldrich. Yeah, we have to do these things. And there's a small tear. <laughs> now, I'm in danger. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's good, wasn't it? That was very good. Yeah, I'm in danger. That was really good. Well done. No, that was, yeah. <laughs> bit, of a, bit of a fly on the wall. Yeah. That's a nice twist. You see, I've, I'm by your side for a reason. That's why I'm here protecting you. Oh, yeah. God. Cool. So, if that's um... probably, I'll uh, probably soon after, that's why I went with my first uh, thing straight to the go and have a few drinks. That's probably what I'm yeah. to do. No, I like it. So, we have um, our four little personal character scenes that we wanted to do. So, just for bringing this to a close to sake, we will reconvene at our layer whereby. Some improvements have certainly been made. Do you have like a logo almost, or have you got like a... Yes, yes we have. You... I have begun the process of the logo. It's very simple. Uh, we start painting the side of the vessel red. It's a red <laughs> fish, right? Because we're the red herrings. Yeah. 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 Yep. So yeah, you can see Let's that... Make it that's obvious so... that we're here. Clearly, <laughs> your um, actions with your patron have moved on. He has, uh, Some wheels have been set in motion and things have improved with the layer. It is now slightly more equipped than it was before. There is a more slightly more well-equipped gym on board for any training you wish to do. There are some doc there are some stations for documents that would be spread out. Perfect. And there is some little gadgety tinkery bits. If you ever you wish to do any crafting or experimenting inside, you can do that more effectively now here. There are a few sort of wards that you can see, like almost symbols that have been put up and almost even again they they can be both for repel and for attracting spirits to try and repel, repel. get more of an idea of the field is there a little um uh dock for um your little canal barge i'm assuming there was one before yeah so we've got the sinking boat that's our base and then we've got the regular little narrow boat that we use to actually go to our job so i guess now that's got a proper dock um, I guess like carved carved into the dock, like on the you know the posts, one of those is carved to look like a herring. Yeah, perfect. Um, and some nice ropes yeah. running down a couple of proper steps. steps. And, and the next one along says, "Don't sinky." I, I'd also like to think that our patrons given us uh, some like uh, bottling equipment for our bootleg liquor. Petrol. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you've got the um, you've got the little dock where. Um, Vanessa would be were she actually moored there. There's a small scrap of paper pinned to one of the um, posts and it says we've reclaimed what you seem to think was yours. Your move. All right, time to kill there's a small then. drawing at the bottom of a narrow boat with a little oar sticking down the back of it and that's where we went okay time, time to go kill some fuckers <laughs> that's where we went for the week then guys so that's didn't, our didn't we steal that from the blue coats aren't they like the police no you didn't we, steal it from we, the blue coats like with them yeah you didn't steal it from the blue coats but we'll pick that up next week guys remind me who we did steal it from we don't know we just know yeah, we stole it from a gang <laughs> 
Okay. We are men so... of easy and casual violence, and they will <laughs> see our wrath. Cool. Yes, they so, will. Again, that's um, everything we wanted to do in character this week. Uh, the other thing that we wanted to do as part of our session 5.5, as it were, was just sort of an out of character discussion on you guys' thoughts on the campaign so far. And this, I know this is a pretty unique system, it's a pretty unique setting, probably different than what you've tried before. So I'm yeah, curious it is to rather hear different. That. It's curious like mildly organized it chaos. It's very much organized chaos. <laughs> no, mildly organized chaos. I didn't say very much. Mildly, mildly organized chaos, <laughs> yes. But no, yeah, I'm, again, my first question to you guys, I think, as the GM, is how have you been finding this so far? Like, as generally, as, a, as an overall sort of week by week thing, how have you been getting very on with different this? Different because you have to work backwards, not forwards in a plan. Mm. I quite like yeah, that. Yeah, I think though. that's definitely a. Yeah, it, brings a new, it brings a new edge to things, but it, it, you, you're working backwards into a plan rather than forwards into a plan where, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to drug those drinks. Or, oh, yeah, I picked that locker. Oh, yeah, I bribed that guy. But, yeah. you know, as you're standing there going <laughs> in front of that yeah. guy, you know. But I think that's, it's sort of, to me, <laughs> that kind of sets up what the theme of this game is. And it's very much, a, it's not a game where you can be prepared and get like oh yeah i already like you get you don't get your rush or your successes from yes i thought about that scenario and i planned for it you get your rushes and your enjoyment from oh my god i now need to come up with something right here and now that will solve this and that's kind of where that's where i think the rewards kind of come from which again i personally really enjoy well i i think the system yeah. the theme and the tone of the system uh, are very apt for you know what you've done with it you know it feels very correct for me i feel it's really right and i like the fact that you might think well this is an easy game to run this is an easy game for a gm to run and actually i would say that this is actually very difficult to run and you've done an incredible job for your first ever game because the players you do not know what they're going to come up with in their flashbacks which makes this much harder to plan whereas if i know for example as a gm there's an area that players can go into i know what's in that area so it doesn't really matter where they go in that area. I know what's in it. This is much harder. And I think that's a real compliment, actually, to you there, Jordan, because mm. um, you have to run with what we're saying. And I like the fact that you won't always just give in to the players. There are moments where things don't go quite how we want. And that's good. You know, that's actually really positive. So I really appreciate those little bits. And I'm never quite sure when I'm going into any flashback how it's going to play out. I don't know what where it's going to go, which is quite exciting, actually more than mm -hmm. it's a flashback that I fully control. It is a flashback, but I don't know fully, and that's quite exciting. And nor do you, because we didn't know what we were going to do before we started it. Um, yeah. and I think that's led to a lot of really interesting high moments, because the thing that this system really focuses on very well is the action. It goes away from all the rubbish, and we really pick up on the strength of the game, which I really like. Yeah. I really appreciate yeah, that. I think that's, it's definitely like, it's what's always grabbed me about this game is the setting in particular. So the city and Very the good. nature. Yeah, really good. Like the I actual, think... the location that you are, what you are, you're, you're not, again, you're, it's, this is another one of those RPG systems where you definitely don't play the good that's guys. You play criminals and you play people that are literally out to, in it for themselves. As a fantasy city, that would pour so well to any fantasy game. I think it's an excellent city. I could really mm. see that working really well. I, I think one of the yeah. things I really like about this is in terms of like, like my background as like somebody who used to do martial arts and boxing, I quite like the fact that we're always counter-punching. Like, I feel like we're always counter-punching and it must be really hard for you as a DM to like throw something at us and then wait for that counter-punch to come in. Good and point, I think... Yeah. It, it's it's I think it, it's a testament to our game that when we do counter punch and even when it goes a little bit wrong we still enjoy it because of the fact that like we 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 just have fun with it and we do what we can and like we do stupid stuff and you you roll with it and but and then you play out the consequences like realistically like we we yeah. kind of have these cool moments like when I tried to get Ben to. Um, basically like do me over to make me look like i'd been uh attacked so i didn't look like i'd let him do it and then it just all went wrong that was like hilarious like <laughs> so i thought there's, uh, there's, oh no that's a really good point is and and you also touch on something else which is really good about it is 
there are moments where you've you've actually done a really good job at setting the situation up against the players. So there was a good one where we were in the tunnel, the barrels were out there. We couldn't just run the blockade. There was a number of men around, armed up. And then I thought to myself, well, I, I don't honestly know how we're going to get out of this. And and then our fearless leader steps up with his cunning bullseye plan of just going straight up to them and, you know, parlay. And the next minute he's hanging a man with a rope. I mean, it's just the greatest <laughs> fun. It's one of the funniest scenes I've ever seen. And then he's like, he's got this man with a rope. And then we're, well, actually, Copper, technically, he's just mooring a boat. I mean, it is hilarious, the whole thing. Yeah, and I just, again, that's what's been so good for me. Because there have been moments in this whereby, like, I feel like, like, I haven't thought, like, it's not so, like, the whole thing with the Lamp Black Revolution. Oh. You viewers might not know this, but that is something that Sean completely came up with on his own. And I fucking love, I love the idea that the Lamp Blacks in this game are a, a gang where basically in Victorian London, they used to have people who would light the gas streetlights. Yeah. They would go along every night and they would, with a, with a lit torch and light the streetlights. And now the idea being that in this city, that because like electricity is essentially taken over, there's no need for them anymore. They've all been made redundant and they've all formed their own gang. And then this idea that they are fighting this battle to like get rid of electricity and re like, I just love that. And that's just something that's, it, it's those moments of just like, oh my God, that's actually really good. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's really a testament to, this is really impressive as you as a first time GM. You kind of yeah. are rolling with a lot of the punches. So this game has been really collaborative, like, Hmm. I feel like a lot of elements come about. Like we'll we'll make some like offhand comment, and then you'll be able to spin it into like a yes, yeah. a crazy. Yeah, I was going to say about collaboration. So that also hoops back into the working backwards on a plan, and what Sean said about you're not putting players into an area that's pre-done with a with a plan and a theme. You you're walking players into an area, and then the players are fucking up your carefully devised plot. And there's another compliment. So yeah, I'm sorry if it sounds like we're just I'm I'm throwing a lot of comments, but I actually it's really powerful to give it to you because you see the thing is it, it I would question this, right? So this is really true. I could run a game and in the kind of possible way of all the years of experience, I would expect the players to not see the obvious ad And I get no reward for that. <laughs> but you can do it in this system. And the players do know it's an ad lib and they appreciate the reward. So actually, yeah, I really like true. that. You know, I really appreciate yeah. that. Because there are times when it's like... there's times I've done stuff and I thought, you know, surely one of the players will see what a great bit of GMing that was. And somebody just says, you must have really planned hard for this. <laughs> I, I, don't, I was just a piece of genius, but yeah. me, why don't you recognize it? No, you get nothing for it. You get nothing goes. for it. You must have played for weeks. No, it took me 10 seconds. I can't with that. But I was going to say, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, Sean. I haven't played in a few of your games. Yes, I have spotted a few of those moments. I'm sure you have, yeah. yeah. Sure. I didn't, didn't want to ruin the immersion. No, like, I, appreciate, I really appreciate different. that, James. But it is hard sometimes. This is why it's so good. So I really appreciate that, Jordan, because I know how hard it is to when somebody is throwing a curveball, how hard you got to work to make it kind of flow with everything else that's going on and still yeah. work. Because it's very easy to go off on a tangent and actually, you know, it just doesn't work anymore. So I think you've done brilliant on that. Oh, and no, it's I really appreciate that, guys. I think, Hopefully. again, this is my my first time sort of... Oh, oh no. Oh, 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 we're good. Oh, oh, Don't panic. Back. Don't panic. With back. camera. Back. Back. Don't panic. Yeah. <laughs> Don't panic, Mr. Mannering. Don't panic. Because hopefully what's happened is that you've had the, 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 the thing that's helped a little bit, hopefully with development, is that you've had some time with some other GMs and you've had, and that's helped when you've chosen your system because you've picked one that you feel comfortable in and that's really good. Yeah. You know, that's important. Yeah. It's not and always I think about that's what's helped me especially to allow this game to be good because I've, again, I've, I've had this system for over a year, almost a year now and it's yeah. something that I've always like enjoyed and I feel like that's, there we go, that's the system. Blades in the Dark by John Harper, published by Evil Hat Productions. But it's one of those where I was like, when I, I, again, you all know that I'm much newer to this than you guys are. But when I found this system, I found something that was like, I can actually picture how a game would go. I, know, I might not be able to do that with a fantasy setting or with a horror setting. But with this one, I looked at it and I was like, you know what? I can picture what a, a criminal gang in a city would actually be doing and how that how that would environment would respond to how they interacted with it and i feel like that's what's important for 
again, I'm, I'm, again, I've done my best to try and make it as good as good as, as good as for you guys as I can, and I hope that you've enjoyed it. Let me just tell you something. Yeah, it's been really good. Two very quick things. Firstly, do yeah, well. not put yourself down in any way, shape, or form. Do not think any of those thoughts in your head of those brain spam moments about things that maybe this didn't work, that didn't work. You can cut that out. This is a ten out of ten for a first time GM. Honestly, listening in and running a game like this, it's hard to do this. And you real credit to you for pulling that off. And I've enjoyed every session. And, you know, we know how hard it is to pull off those ad libs. If you've ever GM before, that is not easy to do. And we're asking you to do that on the fly, which actually is much harder. I would honestly question how difficult that is to do. So really just pat yourself on the back, learn from the experience, and then then you need your next time. Fucking humble, Jordan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, don't get me wrong, guys. I really do appreciate that you've... I, really, I appreciate that, Sean. It means a lot coming from you, and obviously, no, with all honestly, with what appreciate, appreciate you, I know that you have, and I know we all know that you have. So, appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm the same with I Ben. Will... I've learned an awful lot, like when I've seen Ben run games, and you know, they everything, every experience helps another GM out. <laughs> honestly, they're all important, particularly if it's run well. Yeah, and um, the nice thing with this is you might not realize this, but you've actually helped me as well because I've looked at some of that thing and thinking. Actually, you reverse ad libbing is actually quite that's quite cool. I don't see any reason why we can't do some of that stuff in gaming more often. Actually, say, actually, let's have a flashback. What harm does it do? You um, know, and just... what video are you plugging now? Sorry, I'm just uh, a viewer actually. Uh, Eschaton says it's been good to watch you too. Well done, everyone. We're not done, Eschaton. This is just a, a little. 0.5 of an episode. Yeah. We will be back next week with mid season a finale. Episode. Yeah, so this is our again, this is our halfway point, if you will. We have I have I have more encounters written up, guys. Uh, it, it's kind of I'm like in an anime you. when they change the theme song to a worse one, like midway through the season for some reason. Oh, no, some of them are better. Oh, uh, you need to talk to my wife about that. That's like her pet. <laughs> Get your theme. wife in here and we need to discuss stuff cross with her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The uh, t shirts are telling well, No, I want to say as well, guys. Obviously, I really appreciate that you guys have been enjoying this system so far. And the other next question I actually have for you is, in character, obviously, in the moments that we've had, what has been your favourite moments? And I actually want to go first on this, because I have a moment that I said uh, I was going to keep secret until now. My favourite moment so far is the 3-1 roll that Ben <laughs> did in a very, very critical situation <laughs> where he was like, I have set myself up to, I, they need this to go well. And he rolled three dice, which is really good in this system. And he rolled three ones, which is as close to a critical fail as you can get. And it was just so brilliant. And well, so well Jordan, if you would like so to relive brilliant. that horrific moment in my life, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that is showing up in Thursday's video, a clip of that happening, because that is the most memorable critical fail I have ever had, yes. of me pulling a trigger on something, expecting it to work, putting so many dice in, and then it just doing nothing. Yeah, and I think that was just, it's one of those moments, I've always appreciated, like, I've always want, been a big believer in the sort of, you, you embrace failure with RPGs, you don't be like, ugh, I didn't do the thing I want to do, it's bad, but it's like, actually, yeah, it's really funny. I I, I can give you something which kind of slightly goes alongside what you've done. I, I remember once, and I'm sorry to go off tangent, it's just for a split second because it is very apt when we talk about noble failures. I remember I like roll my dice open on the table because I feel that's more dramatic. And I remember setting this scene up with this arch of this assassin and he was a powerful character and all the bonuses, everything you can imagine, every magical item. And I said, he's going to roll with deadly accuracy, three twenties, three ones come up. And you like and it's those moments that like, I just love. Oh, I wish I had this said with deadly accuracy. <laughs> really it's like, oh my god. So oh. yeah, you're right. These things do come to trials, but that was a great scene. That was that was no, that they do. so that's my favourite scene. So I'm gonna again I'm gonna ask everyone in turn if they can come up with a favourite moment that they've had so far of the campaign. Ben, do you have a favourite moment of I think some of my favourite moments have been in downtime scenes with Orlan, where we just get like a little sneak preview of him. Like mm. maybe he doesn't just punch things. Uh, yeah, like the first, the, the first kind of scene where he like washes all of the the grease and stuff out of his hair, and he's like this really proud like ginger warrior, and he goes and helps at the soup kitchen. I think it's quite cool. Um, mm. I've also just enjoyed pulling down Jarrett various bits of masonry. Um, I quite like it. I see. I see now why Halbjorn just threw fucking grenades at people. In, uh, <laughs> nice play oh yeah, frankly. it's so much yeah. fun. No, I appreciate that, Ben Addison. Do you have any favourite moments that you'd like to highlight? 
I think one of my favorite moments, like, I there's a lot, but one of my favorite moments is en- when we ended that game with <laughs> with discard just holding two girls. <laughs> Hosted with a shotgun. <laughs> like, yeah, so that was our that was, that that was, that was, that was under a bus, but we won't worry about that. <laughs> but I think, yeah, for people who may have missed it, that was our first episode that we streamed, and you basically can watch it again on the the YouTube. You can flickering torch on YouTube is where you can catch all of the back episodes of anyone you've missed. And basically, I remember that scene playing plug. You, it, it highlighted what this system I think is so good at, which is just that how quickly things can go wrong and how yeah, you have it... to adapt on the fly to things. So basically, like, they, they successfully infiltrated stealthily into the location and then through a series of not necessarily terrible, but slightly bad roles, and then obviously reactions to those roles from the players, we ended up with a situation whereby, yeah, t- you had two sort of younger or mid late teens early 20s women being held at gunpoint by one of the characters and me just going you know what this has gone beautifully wrong we're gonna we're gonna yeah. leave it there for now it was just the escalation it was just the escalation that made me smile because there's also him being really serious like don't move and then there's just all and Aldrich in the thing like no fucking hit it like like just try to open just, that box death bro yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's just it was just the absolute like everything went out the window, including the kitchen sink and maybe the bathtub. And the window. <laughs> yeah. And the window, <laughs> and the window um, went out the window. <laughs> oh, but yeah, no, I I I do remember that being a quite a, a pivotal moment, and it was very good. Uh, James, have a have a have a contribution, my friend. What did you uh, find favorite moment so far? I think it's got to be. Silas is um, trying to bottle a ghost in the um, <laughs> funeral home. In the current story. That's actually very funny, yeah. <laughs> and then it's oh. actually, that is really good. And then there's the scene where um, Ben's character tries to lock it in a safe. <laughs> Oh, it yeah. just comes out oh, yeah. of the same because obviously you know it does. I, I lock the ghost inside a metal box. Of course, he just escapes straight away. Oh, God, we better run because that ain't gonna hold nothing. That was so funny. That was. Yeah, yeah that was good. Yeah. That was clever. Uh, yeah, we'll come to you now as well, Sean. Have you got any other any favourite scenes you wish to highlight? Or? All the characters have done um, several things that I've quite enjoyed, um, but it's it's most the three ones that stand out. Obviously, our fearless leader. He's absolute ad-lib plans even he doesn't know what he's going to do which is constantly made me laugh whether it's hanging someone whether it's parleying with someone whether it's wrecking their place i mean you never know what he's going to do next that's why i love that we've also got a I mean, addison's character portrayal the method acting involved in that i absolutely adore that and I mean, if, if that's the thought process he has for his npcs as a gm i i'm actually in awe of that because there's so much that you feel from the character. I, I, my, I've taken a journey with him in his descriptions, and that's the highest compliment I can give him because at one point I just thought, well, this is just a thug. And then as the story's evolved and he's just made a few little twists, I've gone, and I nearly told him he's just a thug. And now he's realizing, I'm like, I can't let him say anything to him. He's just yeah. guy. Yeah, I, I will have gone down a and similar the thought twist, process there. Then the twist with the sister, I really like at the end here because it made me think, I knew it was his sister. I kind of worked it out from the things he'd said, but. It was the interplay between yourselves. I thought that was really good. That shows you again your... Yep. Yeah, that's actually hard to pull off that for Jordan because his interplay was clearly... That's how his character would react. That, was a, that was a really fucking hard scene to throw at you and, a bit. There. I'm really and that was, you handled that so well because it would be very difficult to say that even an experienced GM would handle that. That was really good because no. that, that had the potential to be very different. So I really like that from him because his build-up of his character... And then, of course, you've got a peace-shelling destructor of mayhem, who yes. I absolutely... I mean, I've never known anybody who has... It's, it just kind of classically sums up James in essence really well. On the one hand, he speaks so politely and calmly, and on the other hand, he just wants to blow stuff up. <laughs> and I absolutely love well. that. I mean, there's a bit where he's sort of trying to blow dart a woman and, you know, knock her out <laughs> I mean, it's hilarious in itself. It, it goes from the extreme to the ridiculous very quick. He's either blowing shit, stop shooting stuff. I do love it. And and it sums up that character incredibly well. And at the same time, you're noticing the development of that character. At first, 
I wasn't quite sure. And then you slowly seeing this character evolve. In fact, he's got a lot of really good ideas and he's totally been misjudged on what he's doing. So yeah. it's, it's actually really interesting how he's developed that. And I really do like that subtle interplay. It's his, he doesn't say a lot with that character, but when he does, it is hilarious. And I do look back sometimes at the session and I realise I've missed such a great line. I've missed the good line he gave, you know. So I really enjoy it. And then it's, that's it really for me. Uh, but the hanging scene is still my favourite. It's the funniest thing I have, I have is, ever yes. That was Officer, a highlight. He's just trying to moor well. his boat. And I'm like, <laughs> it's pretty. No, I think one um one thing that I want to just swoop back on with you, Sean, is definitely the because obviously we did character creation for this, and it's very loose in terms yeah. of what it allows you to do. It sort of it gives you a generic background. It gives you a generic role in society. It gives you something to do your appearance and then a few skills. But then those moments are like the again some of them have been come up with and allowed to grow some have been literally adapted on the fly like again you threw scenes at me that i had to be like right how do i do this right now but that's just again the beauty of this system it allows you to do that and to adapt your character like you don't have to have a pre-thought out nice. long like this is how my character would react in all these situations you can do it you can build it as we play I massively apologise because I don't play very much as a player, so I apologise for anybody watching some of this character play. It's terror atrocious, but it's it's it, I'm not I don't prescribe myself as a player. Oh, don't do apologise, John. So, uh, I'm brilliant. very much You've been brilliant. It. Yeah, it's been a yeah. lot of fun. I think yeah, no, it's I am. that time of the night for plugs, Jordan, because it's it's, um, it's one thing good. I do want to ask. Just five more minutes, Ben. Is one of, one of the five. question I have for you quickly is just. Again, what we asked the last time, which is just my, um, is there anything that you guys, and again, I know this is a unique system, is there anything that you guys want to see more of going forward or anything that you felt you're not really understanding and want me to explain a bit more? Or Yeah, a uh, small thing for you, um, it, it's a small thing, something to have a think about is um, when the players cock it up, bring the hammer down. Don't be afraid. Do not hold back. Mm. You've held back a couple of times. I respect you for it. You've been very kind to us, mm. and I appreciate that kindness. But do not be afraid to bring that hammer down. If we deserve, if we deserve to have, you know, and maybe you're letting that build as the story unfolds, that's fine. But don't be afraid to bring it down. We cock it up. We expect the repercussions. Is that kill Silas in the next session? Because I heard Probably. kill Silas. If <laughs> I have to sacrifice myself so. for you, my leader, I will. Do not worry. I'm ready. I, to go I, I just heard stop hammer time. <laughs> um, I, no, I have um, something that I was I wanted to ask Jordan whether yes. you, you were going to include it, but I, look, part of me, a lot of our a lot of our um, our heists kind of like happen to us, like they they kind of happen out of like circumstance. Mm -hmm. and I was wondering if if by towards the end or by the time we get like enough, whether we as players could like suggest like heist ideas to the rest of the group. I think see in, what they like, like what they want to do. I think, in fairness to Jordan, I did suggest the diamond heist to him like a couple episodes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I just, I, I, I meant as in more like, um, just like in downtime, like one of the things we could do or something like that. Well, I was or hoping like, you might come up with. Like, I was, I was actually hoping, Addison, that you might come up with something for your as a, as a heist because I was thinking maybe there was some relic battles that was critical to your people that meant something if it was like a flag that was hung or flying that would mean something important i thought that would be amazing. yeah yeah yeah. we can go and get yeah. it and sell it but no yeah i'm i'm perfectly happy with you guys suggesting i mean it doesn't have to necessarily be in game it can be off feel free to message me at any point and say i'd like to try and include this as a possible encounter like again i'll gladly try and write something around it but you can offer me I... targets you can offer me locations things like so that I think, absolutely i, I think I think I have one. Like I, on. I think I have one. Um, can, so basically, can we, can we make this a yeah, surprise? We'll do it. For... We'll let, yeah, doesn't yeah. dragging on a bit, obviously, Addison. We'll do it off stream. But yeah, no, I appreciate the feedback and thank you for it. Um, can I add very... one, one thing to the feedback? Now yeah, that we're ahead. a higher tier, can we can we go screw over some other gangs? I really want to do some gang warfare. <laughs> I, want to well, I think that's what we're about to, to do. Isn't that what we're about to do? That's oh yeah, it is. But I'm. You... I just want you to know I'm. I'm so down for for recruiting gang members and, and doing some gang yeah, the out and uh, do some drive-bys. We can look at. We can certainly look at the bigger the bigger picture and the other factions absolutely and see what we can explore there. Anyone else, James, John, any other feedback you'd like to feed me or 
Any Not points? Um, other than, you know, you are coping with it well for the backwards nature of planning this game. I appreciate that. And, and consider, considering you're all of DM, that's all of you lot. I haven't. I'm enjoying it. So. No, I appreciate that. I'm glad. That's all. That's the main thing. As long as you're enjoying it, I am happy. So well, I'm very much enjoying it. Thank you, John. Thank you very much for the feedback, guys. Excellent. It so it's time where I get control of the show again, right? Yes, I guess. Bring it home, Ben. It's Bring everyone's it favourite segment. Plugs. So we will start with our easiest set of plugs to make. Over over there. Wait, let me let me just Don't look at OBS at to make sure I'm pointing it the the right way. Over over there, that way. Big James, plug anything you want to plug, my dude. I hide on the internet, so um, I will plug the Loom. That's where we hang out and do various tabletop RPGs. It's easy as that. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Down there in the corner, Mister Sean, please plug anything you want to plug. Well. Yeah, obviously the Loom is the place to go if you want your game. And really, in light of everything that's happening, it's a great place to come. Um, but I'm going to plug something that's coming up in February. It's my own Dungeon Master survival guide. I've been writing this for so many years. And I'm going to put that out there. And I'm starting up a brand new YouTube channel to go alongside this. And it's going to be a hub for people that buy the guide and want to help each other develop as to the end. I've taken inspiration from George. Where's this come from? I'm um, sideswiped, flabbergasted. I want yeah, this. But it's, it's been time. I've had this thing lying around for far too long. I'm just putting the finishing touches to get some wonderful art done from a wonderful artist in Brazil and a few other people. So thank you very much to those people. And it's coming out in February, and I'll tell you all more about that. But the Dungeon Master's Survival Guide. There just to make sure to you're not going with the Outsiders 69, are you? No. 68, okay, isn't it? <laughs> well, his no. is currently no, 68. It's... If it's a new one, he might just add one because you don't That's, want that. Uh, <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember yeah, in, did you guys ever play the game Destroy All Humans? And if you died, you became the next Cryptosporidium. So you'd start off as like 2815. And oh, then if God. you died, it, you became 2816. Are you suggesting <laughs> this is uh, Sean's no, 68th <laughs> YouTube channel? <laughs> I've done a few. Uh, it will be uh, it will be a channel specifically where I'm loading on, going to load on some private videos specifically around the guides. So when people buy the guides, they'll have a link. Those videos will then be live, and they can also get the videos as well, which I thought was a really nice. Time. Oh no, that's cool. So, no, I like that idea. So like that will all be going in. It should be up and running by mid February. More on that later. So I'm plugging myself for a change. So there we go. Yeah, he's got. He's nice. got. Sorry, he's got plugs today. That's excellent. Yeah, it's great. He's right. got a book coming out. What's this about? <laughs> well, it's not, the only, it's not the only one. I've got three other things coming out this year. So. You clearly need to write a book so you can plug your book, Addison. Yeah, but... You right, should yeah. actually write yeah. a book. Where, uh, where, where's your book, man? Come on. We'll go to the the man on my direct side. I, I'm not going to work that out. Because uh, I think it flips twice. I think it flips once in OBS and then flips again on Twitch. I'm like... On your computer, you see yourself as you, uh, as in a mirror, and everybody else as it flips you over. Yeah, but I'm not sure if it d translates what to Twitch because I'm. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Jordan, please plug anything you'd like to plug. Yes, um, I'll do what I normally have started doing with this particular campaign, which is to plug my YouTube channel, which is YouTube um, Uninformed RPG on YouTube, I should say, which is a new channel which I've set up recently, which is basically to share my tips and advice around being a new player to tabletop RPGs. Because again, I've only been doing tabletop RPGs for a little over a year now, and again. This is a very new venture for me, being a GM of a campaign, but it's my tips. I understand, I think, what it's like to start out in this hobby, and I wanted to share that advice with people. There is a video out at the minute about my tips for new players starting out. There'll be a new one coming out later this week on my tips for players who are welcoming newcomers into their games and how you can best help somebody to settle in and get the most fun out of it. And then maybe there'll be some tips later on about GMing, because apparently I'm quite good at that as well. Yeah. I will put links in my DMs guide to your channel. All of your channels will have a oh. link on the back of the day, and that includes the loom as well. So, always be plugging. Always <laughs> plugging, people. Gotta That's your motto for life, is it, Ben? In real, in real world. Always be plugging, right? Somewhere now. Right, um, and the man directly underneath me, not in real life, but on the stream overlay. Addison, wish, please plug you anything wish. you would like to um, plug. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I would like to plug the Loom, which is our community hub for RPGs where you put on games and stuff. Uh, we made that as a substitute to our normal gaming club. 
in Northamptonshire, but it is now expanding and we're doing lots of bits with that. So that's doing great. Thank you very much for everybody's help. Um, and the last thing I'd like to promote is the pod of many things is back with our new year's episode with our new year's resolutions where we just talk shit about what we want to do in the coming year. And one of those was write a book, Sean. I can't believe you beat me to it. Um, so, and then um, you can collaborate. Uh, you and Leon can collaborate because I'm also and, putting a product out for o the essentials, old school essentials. I would like some collaboration work from yourself, Ben. Troy. I've got an idea for a mega dungeon. I think there's a brilliant link back into these these channels you've got. So why don't if I set it all up and get get the artists in place, I'll show you what I'm working on. See what you think. Yeah, Ooh, thank you. And then the last the last thing from the pod of many things is we're also expanding our content to include. Uh, Leon is doing uh, recaps of his Feroz campaign, and I get to shout at a microphone and shout into the void of the internet on All Out Ad Salt, which is like one of my favorite things to do. I'm not going to lie. I come in from work. I'm just like, right, get the microphone, get the camera, give me a topic. I'm having it. Ah! <laughs> you all and welcome that shit. <laughs> I all and welcome. I roll for wreck. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway. thank you very much, Ben and Jordan, for having me on, as always. It's always a pleasure. Uh, finally, my plugs. I get to do my bit now. I don't have a book coming out, and I don't plan on making a book anytime soon. But, uh, you know, maybe one day. I'll work on that. Um, I don't know, like a picture book. I could do that. Just pictures of me in, <laughs> doing weird faces. Or after all the loom, no, no, not, half of our emojis are me. That's, that's, not, that's, that's not as weird as the painting you want of yourself, but we'll, we'll leave that one by the by. Look, I think an oil painting to intimidate my guests over myself is a wonderful idea. Anyway, so uh, my actual plugs now, I'll stop fucking about. Follow me at the Flickering Torch on the old Twitters. Uh, you can find me on YouTube uh, as the Flickering Torch. I haven't got that sweet, sweet vanity URL yet, but one day, uh, we're not far off. I need 40 odd more subscribers and then I can get that sweet, sweet vanity URL. Um, you can also watch us live here at 7.30 British Standard Time. 7.30pm British... 7.30pm British Standard Time? That's correct, yes. isn't it? 7.30pm yeah, yeah. British Standard Time for more Blades in the Dark Red Herrings or if you're watching this at some vague point in the future. Um, hopefully the pandemic's over, but we'll be having a different show on there at 7.30 British Standard Time. Because you're a future person from the future. Um, be sure to watch us every week. Follow everyone on Twitter or YouTube. Or if it's James, I guess send a pigeon or something. Because <laughs> hives on the internet. Uh, yep. And we will catch you. On the loom. <laughs> we will send him a pigeon via the loom. Uh, <laughs> and we will catch you uh, next week it's for me, more Blaze in the Dark Red Herrings. Say goodbye, everyone. Thanks, guys. Stay, everyone. Stay safe. Stay safe.